I need to take an extra lesson from you, like this uh, words replacing swearing. By the way, in Russian, the words replacing swearing is uh, entire science, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very similarly uh, uh, sounding words with exactly the same meaning, but it, yeah, it, it might sound far from time. Okay, man. Substitution. Right, okay, so uh, ready to go, ready to roll? Ready uh, for an intro? Uh, okay. So we've got uh, Code Monkey King on the line. Hi, hey. hi, CMK, aka Code Monkey King. This, uh, uh, well, this is actually going to be hopefully a bit better than the previous pilot one. So we've got good sound quality, we've got good video, and um, I think it's time for you to answer a couple of important questions which the viewers would like answering. Really, I think it's time for you to kind of explain why the <laughs> you dropped all those amazing scrapey videos. All the all the audience want to know. Okay, so as far as this is not the very first take already, so a little yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah technical issues. Well, yeah, hopefully uh, the behind the scenes video, <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> the scenes of this interview is, is going to be available on Code Monkey King's channel as well. The outtakes. A, a little bit of a spoiler. So yeah, uh, as far as I've been talking about this uh, several times already, so I'll now try to be really short. Sure. So the idea yeah. is simple. When I just started YouTube, uh, I really didn't intend to start making scrapey or whatever other business sensitive. Uh, business sensitive topic videos. My initial goal was to learn to talk uh, to talk in English and code uh, simultaneously. That was it. So I always under uh, I always I had an understanding that without a proper knowledge of English, without being fluent, without being capable of expre expressing your mind in English when it comes to some tech stuff like programming, uh, you can't be a good freelancer because you would have been doomed to work uh, in outsource companies most likely, but actually dealing with the actual clients uh, would raise your income significantly. So that's the reason why, why, why I was always targeting uh, kind of like uh, Western clients. So I'm from Ukraine, that's the reason why I'm talking about Western clients, so to the West from the perspective of my <laughs> geolocation. So the Western clients uh, was kind of uh, the initial source uh, uh, is the initial source of the income for, for outsourced companies in my country. So I thought that why do I need to pay to those outsourced companies if I can work with the clients directly? So the initial goal, goal was, was to uh, get in touch with these clients directly. But uh, at that time, I didn't even uh, start making money on freelance and I had a, uh, had a completely different job, which I hated with all my heart. And actually, one day I felt like I really want to change my life and and become a programmer and start freelance and start making money on this. So, uh, a few words about the background. Uh, I was home. had you order, can I just about in? Did, had you already been using a computer at home? Had you had you yeah, obviously, even, obviously I, for, when you were a teenager and when yeah, you were younger, did you I just was, write stuff? Uh, when I was when I was a kid, when I was just mm -hmm. born, I was around uh, two years old, and my dad uh, is that called soldier. This man, yep. like uh, this, uh, sol soldiering details, like soldiering wires. Do I say this word, word probably? Solder, solder. Solder. No, electronics, you, you, electronics, you, you, soldering you, electronics. You, you, solder. So uh, my dad had that sort of sort of a tool, and he created and he made a homemade PC, uh, and that was ZX Spectrum, or also it was known as Sinclair. Sinclair was. Yep. It's the last name of the guy, I guess, in England, right? So that's greater. That's real. So that Clive, was the... Clive Sinclair. Sinclair, yeah. In fact, oh, was... in fact, I have one downstairs. Whoa, this is amazing. My dad. In a minute, had... later on in the video, if you talk to the audience, I'll go and fetch it. We'll we'll save that as a little treat. Yeah, the, the, it would be fun to make uh, some special some special video covering this because this is the real mm -hmm. legacy. And that was yeah. my very first experience with computing, with computers and programming as well, because you can't do anything on that uh, computer, on that computer, uh, if you don't code in uh, basic language. That was the basic yeah. language, the programming language called basic. It was hard coded into that computer. So as long as it's boots, you see this kind of interactive shell and you can, uh, it, it was, it didn't have, it didn't have a hard drive. It had, it actually had uh, tape. So all the programs yep. were stored on the tape. So you need a 48k of memory. Absolutely, yeah, 48, mm. 48 uh, kilobytes of memory. The the very initial, the most hardcore version. They had a 128 bit later on, but the, the most hardcore version was this one, 48 bits. 
yeah, so that was my very first experience. And uh, well, I was a kid. I was just wanted to uh, to play games. So I just typed like load and then started the tape and yeah. I, I load in the game. Uh, once uh, I also had a, uh, by the way, uh, I know you'll ask me why I call, why I call myself Kumaki Kin. Uh, just preceding this a little bit, just, just a, a bit of a spoiler. So there was a book like 48 programs in basic and there, there were there were games to play games like let's say snake so when i wanted to play a snake game and i didn't have that snake game on the tape what i needed to do i was a kid i was around i don't know maybe seven years old i opened up the book and i saw the code this coding basic for how to play snake and that was around 200 lines i did yeah. input those 200 lines by hand yeah and then i played, uh, then i played a game for five minutes and yeah. then I turned the computer off. And next time, if I wanted to play Snake, I needed to type this 200 lines again. Yeah, and there was no copy and paste. There was no copy and paste. I needed to type in everything. So that's uh, that's the very initial origin. Of and that code was all in English. So you oh, got exposure yeah. to English very early? Uh, well, at that time, I didn't know English at all. But uh, okay. there, were, there were commentaries in Russian and the code in English. Mm. And the code in that basic was very simple. Like, do yeah, but even the, word, even the word run and load yeah, English. run, run loads well, but uh, I knew those words. Well, obviously, yeah. uh, I, the simple words, I couldn't talk at that time, but no. obviously I knew the words like uh, do, while, for, next, yeah. go run, to. load, go to. Yeah, go to is my favorite operator even now. Can you believe it? Really? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone on Stack Overflow in the programming world says this, you must never use it. <laughs> I disagree. I think that go to is the most uh, the most intriguing one because what happens under the hood? You're just uh, literally using this jump command. So the instruction yeah. either jumps from uh, from the single place in the stack where the program is written to somewhere yeah. different one. And this is so amazing when you understand how this stuff works on the lower level. It's so it's so. Oh, cool. so if you understand assembly, that's what that's all that the go to. I, I had I had I had an experience. I had an experience in assembly, yeah. and the most complicated thing I've ever written in. NASM assembly. There are many assemblies. I yeah. use NASM, N-A-S-M. Mm. Uh, mm. I created a move generator to generate valid moves in chess. So chess yeah. move generator, not the entire chess game, but just the move generator based mm. on MicroMac by uh, Armageddon Miller. Once I did this, I had this that experience. And you know, like, I need to say that when I mastered this uh, lowest level program control flow, like what's the function call from the very lowest level perspective, uh, so what's the instruction pointer, what's the stack, uh, how the memory operates. This really yeah. helped me to uh, understand the floor of programming. And when you have that sort of a basics, it's not a problem to master a high level framework like say. Yeah, because all we're doing is we're just moving things around in memory. That's all yeah. we're doing. Mm. It's, 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 it's all about manipulating the, the, the memory, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's just uh, the more complicated programs arise in, uh, just the level of abstraction is growing. So all this kind of object-oriented stuff, uh, like why it comes actually, because it's just the, the higher level of abstraction. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of it's very, very simple. So just to uh, turn back a little bit uh, before I lost my, my, my thought completely. So initially, uh, I just wanted to change my life completely. I started uh, like, uh, so I decided to do that. And like, uh, there is a problem where uh, you don't have a job, uh, because you don't have experience, and if you don't have experience, you will not land the job, right? So that's yep. a random loop. So I've invented my own way of how to bypass this sort of a thing, <laughs> and I decided that I just need to start doing things to get experience, and no matter if any, anyone actually needs that. So uh, I decided... And again, to... that's, that's, you're solving a problem, aren't you? It's all about problem yeah, solving. Yeah, uh, it's all about problem solving, and uh, well, I didn't have particular technical problems, but my problem was actually to talk in English and to code simultaneously. Yeah. That was, that was yeah. my problem. So then I just started uh, doing different things. And I would say that uh, web scraping wasn't the very beginning of my channel. So I started with uh, a bit more of web, of web development currently. So first I was, uh, my first jobs as a freelancer uh, were related to web development. I had a few uh, hourly paid contracts on Upwork related to web development. Web scraping was involved there as well, but when I just started, I wasn't, uh, I didn't feel that confident in web scraping. And then the most fun thing that I believe no one on Kodemaki channel knows this because I've never been talking about this. You probably don't know this as well. You know, like uh, when I started making these tutorials on web scraping, do you know what was the preceding thought to that? Do you know? 
What was the preceding the preceding time? chess? It was to do with chess. No, it wasn't, no? It wasn't related to chess. Okay. Uh, I wanted to start making money on pure web scraping. Yeah. Because before that, I was making money on web development that was wrapping web scraping code. So like uh, a web application to run the scrapers, to stop the scrapers, to schedule the scrapers, to manipulate the data being stored to the database. Very uh, stuff related to what you're currently doing on YouTube like this, uh, MySQL yeah. stuff and things like that. But I, 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 I had a very clear understanding that if I work on hourly, on hourly based uh, uh, projects on Upwork, I'm really tied to the client. And this is uh, a bit of a slavery and freedom is something I, uh, is something which is the most important thing in my life, right? So yeah, I really can, can, it, can, be just, can I interrupt? What is, um, how do you define freedom? Uh, freedom is uh, the situation where you can express your nature, your internal nature uh, without any tension. That's the freedom. Tension, yeah. yeah. So if you have- Because freedom, you can, if you can you, have, you can have financial freedom. Well, financial, no, actually, no. Yeah, like, uh, can, in one of my last videos, I said, for those of you who believe that money is freedom, you just go for a lens and this is for you. This was a yeah. sarcasm, right? Yeah. I yeah. just said that words. So if you think that uh, money means freedom, you just go freelancing. Because I think yeah. that money is not freedom. So freedom is something when you're not, uh, when you don't find yourself under the pressure, when there is no tension, when everything yeah. in your life flows naturally, when uh, you don't uh, put enormous effort to make money, when you just uh, being your own self, being Koba yeah. King, being Dr. Pai, and getting paid for being Koba King or getting paid for being Dr. Pai. That's the Absolutely. true thing. That's the true thing. Yeah. And in order to achieve that sort of a thing, uh, the only effort we need is the effort to delve uh, deeper within your own nature to reveal something unique that no one else can do. And in that case, you don't need to fight others to land the niche. In that case, you can simply can like, uh, just be very creative and do your own job that no one else can actually do. And this is good enough for living. Well, obviously, you, you won't be very rich uh, after, but uh, I was never looking for being rich. I was always looking for being free. So that's kind of it. So again, if we just try to go back a little bit, uh, yep. if we could go back to this sort of a thing. So you asked me like, why was web scraping and then something else and what happened? So nothing yep. happened really. Uh, what I'm currently doing on YouTube, what I've been doing on YouTube all of the time just reflects my current uh, interests. So when I was, uh, so uh, there was a time when I wanted to start making money on web scraping only because this was a more free schema compared to uh, doing our projects at Upwork. So I switched from our only paid projects to Upwork to doing web scrapers to random people on the internet finding me uh, with the help of my YouTube videos. So I was making like a scraper per person. I yep. I've been doing that a lot. Then I had a client that I've been working with for an entire year. We've been, uh, we've been making real estate property scrapers to scrape all over the world, to scrape the real estate properties from all over the world, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, and that was, uh, I did earn, I don't know, maybe four or I mean, five times more compared to what I've earned at hourly projects on Upwork. So as far as, uh, no, wow. as far as, as, as far as no tax inspector in Ukraine is going to be watching this video. So I can, <laughs> I can say, I can tell about my income without fear <laughs> because, uh, how, we, because we, how, yeah. How, how does, uh, your income just for the viewers, how yeah. did your, in, how did your income writing all the real estate scrapers for your one client? How did that income compare to your income from when you were I, doing I, your, I, your, I your tiling you, job? I just, you were before, yeah. Yeah, I just tell you the numbers. Uh, yeah. The amount of money I've earned on Upwork uh, for 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 all the time is yeah. around two thousand two two and a half thousand dollars. Okay. And for and for web scrapers, it's around maybe six, maybe seven thousand dollars. Right. Wow. So it's it, it's significant. It's really significant. Yeah. Uh, I did. Uh, you know, like, uh, I've bought my house for uh, four thousand. Let's say for five thousand dollars. Yeah, and I spent three times more uh, on a, on an overhaul. Not only at home, but yeah. also uh, I think uh, the territory is now there is a hash around the territory. It's very expensive yeah. because the metal is very expensive, and all that stuff, uh, all that uh, was available only uh, thankfully to this kind of client. Uh, I've been making real estate property scrapers for. So we've been working we're working for a year, and that money that I've earned from that client. 
uh, uh, I've invested them. I, I've, I've invested those money to make my home better. So uh, again, like already like uh, more than three times, uh, uh, I've spent more than three times uh, bigger compared to the initial price of my home. So that's okay. So I just want to say. And, and just just to just I'll let you carry on, but just to recap, you earned three times three times as much with one client than you ever did with Upwork. Uh, yeah, no. uh, I had many clients at Upwork, yeah. and over and uh, overall, it was about two two thousand and a half, about like that. And then, right, so that just shows the power of having some good soft skills and keeping one absolutely, client. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. And also, uh, and also, it shows that uh, if uh, the more specific you are getting. Uh, the yeah. more results in income because being generalist is something that is not comfortable with western world completely so yeah. in the western world it's uh, uh, you need to be very uh, concise and very uh, kind of small. specialist niche niche uh, yeah the, this yeah. niche you need to be the specialist yeah. in this sort of niche the narrow uh, the narrower uh, more narrow the more narrow the scope more specific yeah so the more specific you're getting uh, the more uh, income uh, you will rise in here eventually because yeah. it's all about uh, solving concrete business problems. And the reason why this was paid so well is because real estate properties is very powerful business, business all over the world. The reason is because investing yeah. in real estate uh, uh, results in significant income. And all the idea is to provide some machine learning backgrounds. So, uh, you know, like Western people like this kind of like uh, data driven decisions. They, they like yeah. to rely on data and you know to be able to rely on data you first need to scrape this data from somewhere right and yeah. once you get this data from somewhere you will, you will then need to uh, run this through the complicated machine learning algorithms to get some uh, insights from that sort of the data and yeah. uh, my my uh, my boss let's say he wasn't my boss he's my friend by the way uh, recently I asked him Man, uh, I need uh, your Amazon Web Server instance to record a video for chess programming. Can you give me an access for free? And he gave me. <laughs> uh, I wondered about that. I thought, wow, CMK's gone all corporate and he's got an Amazon Web Server. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, it, that wasn't my Web Server. <laughs> yeah, that was my friend one. So we'll oh, get onto it. We'll get onto machine learning later because I know it's quite a hot hot topic for a lot of viewers and it's it's very popular. Yeah, trending. Well, so we'll, we'll we'll get to that later, shall we? Yeah, we'll, we'll absolutely we'll get for yeah. that. We'll, we'll go for that. Definitely, it's, it's really yeah. it's really kind of like. mm. So yeah, and uh, I would say that doing this web scraping resulted in uh, much much greater income. But just to give you an idea that it was accidental, I wasn't really going for this. I uh, this happened not because I wanted to earn more money. I didn't want to earn more money. I thought that when if I drop uh, hourly paid projects at Upwork and go to nowhere, literally to nowhere. With only my YouTube client base and only web scraping stuff, I thought that in that case I won't be able to uh, to earn much. But it just happened that I earned really, really more compared to what it was before. But the reason why I consider that I try, I, I, I only wanted to be, uh, I, I was looking for freedom. I just didn't want to stick to this meetings all all the way along. Uh, to, yeah. Talking about like what did I see, what did I do within this hourly rate I've been tracking. So. Uh, all this annoying screenshots on when you're working it's, it's really annoying you need to explain your client all the things and if uh, you're also getting involved into uh the client's uh, uh internal business like he has another employees you need to interact with them it's annoying so same yeah. saying in simple uh using the simple abbreviation uh it's a bit too corporate inappropriate business Interactions. That's, that's how it BS. Is. We allowed to say BS. Yeah, we we will allowed to say BS. Yeah, <laughs> IBI. Yeah, IB. <laughs> yeah, IB. So inappropriate business interaction. So later on, so I, I'm I'm almost finished. I'm sorry. So uh, oh, don't apologize. I'm, people are interested. I just mm. I just don't really want to uh, this video to last forever. So they <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, and then. Uh, what I'm currently doing is absolutely the same. Even though uh, financially it might be really beneficial to doing only web scrapers or people worldwide, and it's very it's very beneficial. But uh, it doesn't cost that. I mean, like the price I pay internally, I'm not free. So if I need to make mm -hmm. some web scraper, I need to be bothered with bypassing any scraping measures. Yeah. Uh, with uh, paid proxies, all this. 
all this stuff. So I'm really, I'm so yeah. tired of this. It's very mm -hmm. annoying, and I would rather have less money, but uh, but be free, rather than uh, trying to grab many, lots of money and uh, stick to this to this inappropriate inappropriate stuff well the business interaction there is okay but mm -hmm. uh the topic itself is very boring and uh the long, uh, the more i was doing web scraping uh the harder it it was i believe that in future web scraping would disappear you know why because absolutely it, it would be just a paid services yes so, yeah uh, if now someone a guy asks me can you please scrape this site you know what i tell him mm. uh, i tell him like you just uh, uh Get a paid I service yeah, you just uh, contact their their support team and ask for the API yeah. access. You just get yeah. the API token, and if they even if they don't have that API, you just ask them to whitelist you, or yeah. not to blacklist you at the release. You just tell them that you that you're gonna be scraping their site. You just try yeah. to, instead of you will pay anyway. I'm telling to my clients. Yeah, I've been telling to my clients you're gonna be paying uh, anyway. Then instead of uh, paying for paid proxies and freelancers, yeah, uh, we and both are doomed. If yep. they want to protect the site, the freelancer is doomed. The paid proxies are doomed. If they use yep. the networks, which is the world's world's leading anti scraping system, uh, you're doomed. You're not going to scrape anything. That's 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 the key. So only so if you're ready to pay, you better pay for the data directly, and you just better yep. hire a freelancer to create. And then you get clean data. It's not messy and it's not broken. Yeah, absolutely. It's not messy. API not is the way to go. Yeah, you don't need to extract this manually. You don't need to sort that data. Uh, yeah. uh, the data is not getting skipped from time to time if the yeah. request is wrong or something. It's ordered. So you literally, uh, you literally uh, copy, uh, you, you literally snapshot the database. So it's, it's yeah. a matter of snapshotting the database. That's kind of it. It's, not, it's no longer a web scraping. So that's kind of it. And now as far as I really want to, uh, as, I'm, as, I'm, as far as I'm looking for freedom, now I thought that probably... If I just compare all the skills I have, then I would say that talking in English is uh, my current best skill. So I think I talk in English much better than I could, I would say. Uh, that's, that's the matter of practice because uh, within the last... I disagree. I disagree. <laughs> Thank but, you, man. That, that might sound like an insult saying your English isn't so good. What I mean is your coding. Well, I, I don't mean your English is not great, I mean your, but I mean your coding is amazing. <laughs> Thank you, man. That, that's <laughs> that's what I really... So uh, the point is that uh, for the last two years, I've been talking in English every day, at least for two hours. You just open your right. mouth and then you just close this after two hours. You just see, you just have a look at my videos, you know, every day, there's yeah. a new video, like one hour, two hour longs. So mm -hmm. I've been talking, talking, talking all of the time. So I've been working on pronunciation, I've been working, working on accents, I've been working yeah. on grammar, uh, idioms, all, all this stuff. Uh, let's say the, the word flattering, right? I didn't know the yeah. word flattering like <laughs> two months ago, but someone, a guy actually mailed me that something was flattering and I'm like, okay, I need to Google translate this. And then I Google translate <laughs> this, flattering. Oh, I now, now I know what I mean. And I, I, just just quick, very quickly for the viewers, can you just say fast car? Fast car. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not that, man. I know, I know it sounds... Uh, 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 I, I had I had a fun yesterday. I, I've been translating your video to my subscribers, <laughs> and you 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 were saying the word here, and you say like yeah. here, and I'm thinking like what the heck is here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here. Here. Yeah. So, yeah. here. <laughs> <Rope there. laughs> <Bob. laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I've been trying I've been trying to master uh, like some some of like uh, the standard BBC British English like uh, accent, BBC like uh, accent, but I yes. think I, I, I've been trying to, to follow the, there was, the, there is a nice British YouTuber, his name is uh, uh, Papa, uh, Papa English or something like that, or yeah, yeah Papa English, he, he, he looks like Jason Statham, he looks like <laughs> Jason Statham. He's, he's uh bald and wearing suits and he is very brutal, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, from him I knew that Cockney uh, accent exists actually. <laughs> and you all right, mate. All right, mate. Yeah, all yeah. Right, mate. Give us an all right, mate. Uh, man, I didn't, I didn't get it. Get yeah, it. So say all right, mate. All right, mate. So say it to us. All right, mate. All right, mate. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Thank you. Well, so uh, I currently think. Well, the problem is that um, I was trying to avoid the Russian-speaking community uh, mm. these two years through the last two years because I didn't feel confident enough 
uh, and people in my country, in Ukraine and in Russia as well, are very, uh, they're judging too much. They're judging people too much without delving into the details and the yeah. behind. And that's very uh, annoying and that's very, that hurts a lot to, to say at least. But no, yeah. I, feel, I feel like confident enough. So I think that if I can talk to native speaker and they don't, then I'm confident enough to teach them English. So what's, it's not a big deal, right? Then I thought- And just, that, and just sorry, I just for the viewers, uh, we, we keep saying English, but we don't actually just mean England or the UK because many, many of your clients probably were from, were they from Germany, South Africa, many other countries that also you either use English as their native tongue or as a second tongue. So it just opens up even other countries that use English, not just England or UK or America. Yeah, I had lots of clients from France, really lots of French clients. Yeah. That, that, that was my very first experience, by the way. So yeah, yeah uh, and now I think, now, now I feel like I'm ready to talk to the Russian speaking world, basically. And if I can talk to the Russian speaking world, I can see no reason to teach them how to code because there are guys that do this much better than I do, like let's say Trevor mm -hmm. Sinidia, right? The absolutely amazing yeah. channel. And I just thought maybe I just teach them English so they would be able to learn how to code on their own by watching the native speakers content, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why, not to do, why not to go for this? And also the billing schemas are, are way more easier because this worldwide international transfers are not always that smooth uh, as we wanted them to have also this uh, uh, additional fees for the services are growing significantly. So it's, it might not be that beneficial uh, all, uh, all yeah. the time. But if let's say I deal with someone from my country, we can just uh, make a transaction from the, from one local bank to another local bank without any fees. Absolutely yeah. free, and everybody's happy. So that's yeah. I think that's I think that's the way to go. So there is a well. Also, I'm learning Korean. That's another topic. And first I thought that it would be nice to teach Koreans in Korean how to talk in English, but then I thought, okay, that's a little bit too much. I can't, I'm not that great at Korean at the moment. Even, even though I can say, it's not bad enough really to, to explain them about uh, uh, <laughs> about word order in English, I just said this in Korean. Because <laughs> um, I think on the, I think I read on your channel at one point you you mentioned about you were going to use some of the the money that you were you were going to be getting from I think you said from YouTube actually you were going to be using that money to pay for Korean lessons. Is that true? Uh, no, that's not true. Well, no, okay. Well, I thought I, uh, I, I don't know where did it no so uh, how are you, your career I, I mean, I'm curious about your career yeah are you yeah. paying for these lessons or is this kind of you you teach them Man. some Russian in exchange for no, the Korean no, no. or how does it work no, uh, I I don't teach Koreans uh I teach no. Korean from a Korean teacher and I've been telling you about this and you know <laughs> what and right, but just for the sake of, for the sake of the viewers <laughs> okay so uh, well, I hope my Korean teacher is not going to be watching this because I really, <laughs> I, I really try to keep this private. Uh, so I get in touch with absolutely amazing Korean teacher. She's uh, she's a girl of my favorite age. Well, somewhere I don't know, maybe around forty-five, uh, I believe. Mm. So about about 10, 10 years older than I am, or so. And uh, the way how I learn is very simple. So we mail each other in Korean. And recently, okay. I've started asking her to also record her voice and videos. Well, videos is a bit of a present to me, so she doesn't yeah. she doesn't do that uh, she doesn't do that often. Uh, I wanted it to, to see, right? But uh, she records her voice quite pretty often, almost every day now. And I'm just listening to her to her voice. I'm trying to recognize when I completely give up. I use Google Translate for voice. <laughs> And you know it's it's really uh, sometimes it's uh, it's been fun like uh, the recent sketch the recent sketch so she said uh, the, the, literally to translate what she said was uh, it's not easy to record the voice uh, here is the example but uh, when I was trying to hear that in Korean uh, I heard like uh, this is not uh, hard to use complicated tools this is your girl this is your girl. <laughs> <laughs> so you mixed up example with girl which were the two words you mixed up girl and example uh well uh i got in korean uh there is a grammar construct so it's like oh, a, okay. a sort of a rapper 
around the words. And yeah. I, I can't properly recognize this construct, like uh, the verb at the end and the subject uh, in the beginning. But yeah. everything that goes in between, it might sound so similarly, so the sense is changing so significantly. And it was, it was really fun, I told you, like, I'm sorry, uh, I know this is not what you've said, probably you want to hear <laughs> what you want to hear. <laughs> right? <laughs> that was just a joke. Oh so, yeah, uh, uh, it's not it's not this, that easy. But uh, here is uh, here is uh, a tip from Kuma Kikini if you're learning languages. Yes, uh, let's have it. Uh, this is very important. One phrase, but it's but it's worth it. I swear. So you can recognize with your ears only those words and phrases that you can compose and say on your own. So if you can mm -hmm. say something, in that case you can hear it. If you can't say that, or if you don't say that, if you're not used to saying things like that, in that case, if you hear that. You won't recognize yep. that. So, uh, and that's the reason why the main practice for uh, language learning, in my in my personal opinion, is the sentence building practice. This is for me currently. Uh, this is the only and the major, the major and the only actually practice. So when I learned Korean, I started with grammar. I was trying some conversational patterns, but I'm, but then I dropped that completely. Uh, what I'm yep. currently doing, I'm just building sentences. So I'm getting yep. email, I'm getting an email from her. And I read this. I read this. I may record how I read to send it back to to give her, to, to give her an idea about my pronunciation. Uh, and then uh, I compose the response, and then I read that response as well and record another video just to make it a little yeah. bit directed. So that's the way to go. So I only build sentences in Korean every every single day. Uh, and when I'm reading her responses, I'm picking up some new grammar points, new structures from there. I might be asking a few questions about that. But generally, it goes very intuitively. It's like a child, if I was a kid, was learning language like as a native speaker. That's yeah, I, I, had I, watched, I, watched, I watched a documentary on YouTube um, on Friday, and it was, uh, they were talking about children don't learn languages. Children acquire well, languages. Yeah. There's a very big difference, isn't there? Absolutely, this is absolutely fantastic uh, difference. It's all about mm. uh, knowledge versus flow-driven uh, flow approach. And children so, have the flow. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Children are not yet uh, spoiled with uh, the outer world, and they their nature is not yet being violated. So yeah. they do feel their internal nature, and they are open-minded, and they yeah. are open-hearted as well and they can just uh, let this kind of thing in. The problem is when you grow up, uh, most likely you get hurt a lot within your life and that makes mm. you being very close. And when yeah. you're closed, you, can, you just can't open uh, to, the new, uh, to, the, to the new knowledge. You just can't open your heart to acquire something new. That's the problem. Do you think switching to learning a foreign language um, erases some of that hurt and some of that baggage? And then when you switch to a brand new language, it's like a clean sheet of paper? Oh, uh, man, uh, could you please ask this question uh, in a bit different way? Because if I start, sure. if, I, so yeah. how, if, if I start a answering this one, it would take another three hours. We just tried to <laughs> answer this so I could answer something like yes or no. <laughs> Fine. Uh, yeah. In, in English, we call them open or closed questions. A closed okay. question, you can answer as yes or no. Okay. An open question, you could answer with anything. Yeah. So just, just would you agree? Would you agree, yes or no, that learning a brand new language is like a clean sheet of paper? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you mm. need to be yeah. your consciousness should be like a clean sheet of paper. And yeah. I, would, I would even I would even say, yeah, I just didn't hear the clean sheet of uh, the clean mm. sheet of paper first. So yeah. I I tried to uh, to cheat a little bit as if I understood what you said, but I didn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't recognize the clean sheet of paper. And because we're because we're we this is a, like a family audience. Be careful with your pronunciation of sheet. <laughs> yeah. Be careful with your monetization on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I would say that there is a, a very great Eastern saying, uh, like a full cup of tea. So if the cup of tea is full, it's yeah. full with tea. Uh, you can uh, pour water in there any longer. It would yeah. be just uh, going out of the cup. So, uh, yeah. so this, this is what this this is what's happening. To the learning process, you first you need to get rid of that tea. You just yeah. get rid of that tea, and then when when you have an empty cup, in that case you can uh, put some fresh water inside. And this is yeah. the same with learning uh, with le learning new languages. Well, for me personally, I don't. I'm sorry. I I, I almost say I don't give a 
you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't say any, I can see any difference uh, between learning languages like spoken languages or, or programming languages. It's all yeah. about uh, making your consciousness free of uh, some free, free, how to say this, uh, some structures. So get rid of the structures in your consciousness. Mm -hmm. It should be, it should be clear. You should like, it's, it's like uh, uh, if you're creating an object instance, an object oriented programming, and if you then forget to uh, clean the memory, like in C++, right? Yeah, uh, you don't need to do this in Python, but in C++, if you create an object instance, you will then need to destroy this. Otherwise, the memory being dynamically allocated to get that sort of an object uh, yeah. would still be in use. You have, you have a constructor and a destructor. Yeah, yeah constructor. Mm. So before uh, learning something new, we need to make sure to run the destructor in our end of yeah. memory. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of it. So finally, I finished. <laughs> 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 okay, so just to sum up the, this so far, then uh, we'll get onto some other bits and pieces related to kind of coding and everything in a minute. But um, uh, let's. Um, what would so your top tip for language learning? Um, your top tip for language learning is learn sentences and have some flow. Not le not learn. My top tip is not to learn sentences, but no. to build sentences. To build, build sentences. Build sentences. Build sentences. So uh, here is the deal. It's a, just, just to give you an idea of why. So what is the language? What is the spoken language? It is the form that gives your consciousness flow a sort of a sort of uh, borders, right? So yeah. it's just a form, uh, a thin language, is a thing that formulates your consciousness flow into uh, using this sample patterns, uh, yeah. and using these kind of patterns, it then uh, it kind of like in uh, it turns into into uh, into a certain phrase. So first yeah. we have the raw consciousness, then we have the patterns. Like in English, let's say uh, these patterns are tenses. So yeah. in order to think in English, you need to understand the concept of tenses. If you don't, you, it's it's not going to be English. It's going to be your own language, and then you try to translate very very fast. It's not. It doesn't yeah. need to be fluent. In order to be fluent, you need to think with tenses. When I started talking in English, I switched my brain to think <laughs> in, using tenses. Because when we speak in Russian, it's totally different. There are no tenses in Russian. When I speak in Korean, it's no, I don't speak in Korean. Okay, but when I try to talk in Korean, uh, it's all about uh, verbs. Like uh, mm -hmm. Korean is like a verb-driven language, so it's all about yeah. verbs and actions. So it's tied to the action. So you need to first to, to keep in mind the action, and then give the details that are described in this action in in a bit more detail. But there are no tenses as well. And in English, mm -hmm. it's really important to know the senses. So the top tip for language learning is to understand that consciousness flow is the initial thing we want to deliver to our listeners. If we concentrate on this consciousness flow, and if we will then uh, make sure to master the certain patterns uh, that are associated with this kind of language. So in English, this is definitely the tenses. So it's not yeah. the matter of knowing what is perfect continuous tense or present indefinite or whatever else. Uh, the tense on its own, so what is tense? And uh, the trick is, let's say if we translate tense into Russian using the Google Translate, it, go, it gives a very wrong term. It's grammatically correct, but from the conceptual perspective, it's horribly wrong because uh, uh, it's, it translates tense as the time, but tense is not time. And sometimes the, the tense and time might not match. And the first uh, initial source where, where I saw this initially was the English tutorial about English grammar. Yeah. They don't teach you all this in Russian tutorials about English grammar. They just say tense is time, but it's not so. But the English no. tutorial on English grammar, they say that tense and time are two different things. So before, if you don't know what the tenses is, how to manipulate them, you can be fluent no matter how many words you know, no matter how many uh phrases etc so it's incredibly important to know this uh core patterns uh covered within the language and then once you know those patterns you can then go for a sentence building practice so you need to have the consciousness first then this parents and then over and then going for a sentence building practice so that's that's the top, top tip from code. <laughs> and so uh, interesting you just said core patterns there core patterns actually is what you need to what you need to learn when you're learning code as well. So it's the same, isn't it? 
Absolutely, and this is this is a very big issue to say at least because nowadays when people learn learning to code, all they think about is how to get more money, how to earn more money, how to escape the poverty, uh, things like that. Because uh, they don't even know like what's the low level program flow. They don't know what the instruction pointer is. They have no idea how the operating how the how the random access memory operates. They don't, they don't know what the variables are at the lowest level. They don't know what are the pointers. And let's say the pointers is something you really need to be aware of because yeah. when it comes, say, to uh, making a reference to the object, uh, which is literally the pointer, or uh, making a deep copy of the object when we're talking about the data yeah. structure. Uh, about a few months ago, you did, I think it was you were helping Andy, weren't you? And you did a video on deep shallow copy versus yeah, deep I, copy. And, and yeah, I, I yeah, looked I mean, at that and I saw that and I thought, oh, yeah, because Python. It's not like C. It doesn't. There's no real. And uh, no real... here is the deal. You know, like no matter how many, uh, how many floors you will build on top of the roof, right? Yeah. It might be a skyscraper, right? But yeah. uh, still, uh, the principle of uh, the difference between the actual memory address containing the certain bits, which is the data, yeah. and the like, the actual, the physical location. And the yeah. pointer to this special physical location would always be yeah. different, okay? And yeah. if we talk about if we, if we talk about this from the uh, like web scraping uh, perspective, uh, data structures, no matter whether it's Python or JavaScript. By the way, the, the video was covering both Python and JavaScript because yeah. no matter the program, what the problem the language is, uh, it's the matter of how the memory operates. And this is getting very confusing when people don't understand the difference. So if just try to explain this in very simple words. It's like uh, if you have a shortcut, a shortcut on your desktop on Windows, which I hate, right? Yeah. So say you have a shortcut to your favorite game. Or for Linux users, a symbolic link. Yeah, symbolic link yeah. on Linux, but uh, symbolic link doesn't represent this concept that much because no. uh, I mean, like these shortcuts uh, on Windows more likely representing that. I, I think yeah. that's a bit more precise way mm. to describe. So let's say you have your favorite game on Windows and yep. you just uh, uh, have this shortcut on your desktop, and if you click it, you run the game. But your game is not installed on the desktop. It's installed at C slash program file slash your game name, right? Yeah, yeah. It's in the C drive. It's in the program files folder. It's not on the desktop. And the same with this kind of uh, uh, objects, like the data structures, like objects uh, containing your data. So the actual objects, so if you want to make a deep copy, it's like if you go to your C drive and make a physical copy of that file. And if you're using this reference, it's similar to as if you make, as if you've made a shortcut or that sort of a, uh, that sort of a file on your hard drive, and you just make a shortcut on your desktop. So that's the, that's the reference. That's the pointers. So shortcuts on desktop are the pointers. So yeah. And, and if you if you grew up, if you were young, so for our younger viewers, if you grow up and you're just learning Python, it's worth being aware of C. Well, not necessarily C++, but just have some awareness of C. Yes, Even C if you just do a, C, a Hello World C tutorial, and then you just create some integers and some character arrays. It's yeah, uh, pointers. But the way, absolutely the same thing uh, goes with, with the data types. So let's say in mm. dynamically typed languages like Python and JavaScript, you don't give a, I'm sorry, uh, you, don't <laughs> yeah. about, you don't care about. Uh, you don't Monetization. <laughs> you don't care about. Uh, what kind of data type it is, whether it's an integer or a string. Mm. So it has all those int, str, in Python, all this high level built in yeah. functionality to turn one uh, data type into another. And the data type is literally an instance of a class. And you can't really get an idea of what is that uh, in essence, or, or what is that in essence, actually. Mm. But Which in, is, so in some ways, Python is almost too kind, too nice to you, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It just yeah. it's okay. It's very nice to it's it's good to use Python. You know, like uh if you master the skateboard and then mm. a bicycle and then yeah. a scooter and then a motorcycle and mm. then a, like car and then yeah. like sport car and then a minivan and then mm. a monster truck and then <laughs> and only then you can go for a spaceship. Okay? Yeah. So Python yeah. is like a spaceship, assembly is like a skateboard. Yeah. So if you don't know how to ride the skateboard and you go into the space and you go into outer space on a spaceship, uh, <laughs> you might not be prepared that well. That's <laughs> and when you're in the space up there, uh, yeah. you can't uh, you can't fix things if something goes wrong. 
That's no. the, the, you first need to be on the ground to, to train a little bit, to get the solid basics, and then you can yeah. learn whatever. Because yes. I know some of the Raspberry, I see some of the Raspberry Pi stuff, because obviously Dr. Pi came from that kind of, and yeah, um, a, lot of the, a lot of the Raspberry Pi stuff starts off with Python, not even full Python, some of it's micro Python and, and so on. And uh, to be fair, they do do C tutorials, but I, I think it's important to emphasize that C is really, is, is so good to know about and have knowledge of. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Uh, if, we, if we're talking about what are the reasons to use C in 2021, I would say writing operating systems, writing mm. test engines, writing programming languages. If you don't do any of this, you don't need C uh, professional. Well, also like embedded programming. Also. Yeah, controlling machines, Arduino, yes, yeah. electronics. Yeah, yeah. Like Arduino, yeah, and Raspberry Pi, yeah. 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 Uh, but uh, I believe that even today's poor courses sometimes has C as the basic subject because yeah. it, it allows you to, to understand the floor of programming. It's very, it's very old language. Uh, it's, is it, it's, it's around 50 years, if I'm not if I'm I believe so, uh, 60s, 1960-something, wasn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's much older than I am, to say at least. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's probably it's older than you, I think. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, but it's, it's really essential for, for beginners to, to, to have a proper mindset. It will give a flexibility in future, because if you mm. just stick to Python, then if you need to learn JavaScript, you need to pay another, I don't know, 20 bucks, uh, 20 hundred bucks for another course at Udemy, right? If yeah, you yeah. want to master, like, I don't know, whatever whatever other language, uh, then you need to pay another 20 hundred bucks. But if you know C, if you, know, if you understand the floor of programming, you can just read through the documentation, and in the next couple of days, you would find yourself already coding in that language. That would happen. Yeah. By the way, uh, some, some, one interesting business-related insight. Uh, my very first experience with web development for money it was a very fun story. I keep telling this story. So once uh, I've been watching two videos by Trevor Media about RESTful APIs in Python and Flask, and in the next uh, in the next uh, in the next month, I earned uh, slightly more than five hundred dollars, based only on knowledge uh, I've taken from those videos. I've been I've been wow. showing the I've been showing the exact Upwork contract in one of my previous videos and comment you can channels. So those wow. I have a look at that. Yeah, five hundred dollars. I, I just created the rest of the API uh, in the way. Was that using Flask and Python? What? What 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 were you using? What what language? Python and Flask. Python, so. Python and Flask. Yeah, the yeah. Python mm. and the Flask for uh, for web uh, to to build a web application. Yeah. Uh, and I built a custom. Uh, I built. I built. Uh, I built a custom RESTful API and connected that to the database. I didn't use Traverse Media's code directly. I did write my own code, but I just yeah. used the ideas taken from the videos. Now here is the point: in order to be able to learn in that sort of way, absolutely for free, you need to have that solid basis. Because otherwise, you would be just a code monkey copy pasting someone else's code that would yeah. be in yeah. production. So that's kind of it. Yeah. Which brings me on to a very kind of important question, and you mentioned this uh, the other day, I think it was on some comments. Um, many, many people these days use videos for an overview, and some use it to actually follow the code. Um, what, what are your thoughts on that? Do you, do you think it's important to, to watch just a video for a quick overview, and then you go off and try and create the code yourself? Or do you think it's also a good practice to follow a, a one hour tutorial and, and then type everything that, that you're watching? It's a very, very important question. Thanks for asking. So for those interested in code, you better go on, on GitHub, not on YouTube. You just go on GitHub and search for whatever you want. You will get the code and you're done. But that's too easy. That's too easy, yeah. And mm. But you won't learn much from that. Mm. Uh, well, unless you're very you have a big expertise in the field and you just yeah. have the proper solution. Well, that, that's not the case. We're not talking about some uh, pros currently. We're talking about beginners. So yeah. I would say uh, just a few words on how I was learning to code, how I still learn to code if I need to pick up something new. So let's let's take Trevor Simidi as an example. He's absolutely amazing guy for this sort of a purposes of learning. So that's how it works. I open. Trevor Media's tutorial, and I literally follow step by step every single character he types in in his mm. code editor on the screen in the video. I do yeah. type this in 
on my side. He runs okay. the code, I run the code. I don't even yeah. try to understand what's going on. I just try to mimic. That's the reason why I can why I call myself Code Monkey King. This comes from Monkey See, Monkey Do. Yeah, monkey see, monkey do. So first, I just try to uh, mimic what he does. By the way, yeah. uh, initially, uh, I came up with this sort of a technique. Well, if we drop the experience with uh, ZX Spectrum back back in the day when I, when I was a kid, when I wanted to play a game of Snake, uh, if we yeah. drop that experience, uh, my actual studies in coding, uh, I didn't want to learn to code. I, I wanted to have a working chess engine playing in my style of chess. Okay. Yeah. I, w I was trying to avoid uh, learning to code at any cost because I knew that it's too complicated, sophisticated. Yeah. So I didn't really want to go for that. But it no. just happened that I realized that, okay, so I need to learn something about coding because otherwise I won't be able to change the values in the evaluation tables. <laughs> so the code yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and, yeah, so I think, okay, so I need to, to learn a little bit of a C. And then, you know, like, uh, there is an absolutely amazing guy on YouTube, uh, the author of the legendary series Chess Engine in C. Uh, his channel is called Blue Fever Software. The actual guy's name is Richard Olbert. He's from UK. He's absolutely yeah. amazing guy. And the style of tutorials that I do on YouTube is 100% inspired by his tutorials. So you wow. literally open up the, te the text editor. He never used IDEs. He would always no. use the bare text editor and the console. No matter, he, yeah. he made a videos on Linux, on, on Windows, on Mac even. It doesn't matter. Every, uh, what, no matter what the operating system is, he was opening the text editor and the console. He writes the code yeah. in the text editor. He runs this in the, in the console. And since then, yeah. I can't use IDs. So there yeah. were uh, more than 80 videos, if I'm not mistaken. Well, at least more than 60 videos. Let's say more than 60 videos in his playlist. In my playlist on Bitboard, as you can see, I have 95 videos. It's more than I, I think I beat him <laughs> in that case. <laughs> so, uh, but I remember that I've been following at least 40 videos yeah. from the beginning and up to the very end. And yeah. even though I, uh, I already found myself where I can, where I kind of could understand what's going on, but still, I didn't drop watching that. I didn't drop following. I was typing every single. Every single uh, character from screen to my yeah. to my editor. I didn't use the code. I never downloaded this code to paste this into my own code. No. I was changing the variable names. That's that's an interesting practice. So to make yeah. sure that I know that I understand how this works, I didn't use the variable names he used. I used my own variable names. Yeah. So uh, if I have any compilation error, I understand uh, why why this is happening basically. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's that's kind of it, and I think this already serves as the answer to the question that you have asked. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Because um, I think I, I kind of put my code on GitHub partly just just in case anybody really really desperately wants it, and it saves them some time. Um, but I'd really agree with you that if you just copy the code, you, you're not going to learn anything, are you? Copy and pasting code is just not not teaching you anything, is it? Yeah, uh, I wasn't even thinking about that. My, maybe I, I shouldn't put my code on GitHub. In that case, mm. this, this would increase the number of views for my videos. Hence, the yeah. validation would be better. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah but, I mean, but unfortunately, uh, I dropped programming before that idea has come into my head. So. Yeah, yeah, but also, if, if somebody copies and pastes your code, and then they and then they can't get it to work, then they send you a message, and then you can fix it for them, and then you can do a video about that. You can show how you fixed it. And it's yeah, one thing. Leads, sometimes one thing leads to another that leads to another. So, well, it depends. I think it depends on the goals you're setting. So initially, yeah. I was setting the goals to grow the community behind this channel because this channel yeah. is literally nothing without the community behind it. Mm. So I was trying to kind of hook the viewers a little bit. So I was trying to hook them with my code base and just what you've mentioned now. So a yeah. guy takes the code, something's not working, but as far as I'm the author of this code, I can actually fix that. Or if he wants to do some, some altering, some slight modifications, in that case, I can just uh, do that for him. If he wants something more, I can even make this as a paid project. And yeah, that's the way how to interact with people more. But when you're getting annoyed from interacting with people, you want uh, the opposite, and that's what yeah. that's what happened to me. So uh, yeah. uh, I I would say in English this is called uh, burnout. Yeah, burnout. fatigue, fatigue. Yeah, yeah. web uh, web scraping fatigue. Yeah. yeah. Um,
Yeah, no, that's interesting because I, I, um, I had a comment a while back, probably around about Christmas time, and I can't remember what they said. They said, but I've had probably, I've had probably more comments talking about how some of my videos have given them ideas or inspiration. Would you say that? Would you say that as well as your code, you've also given many people, or hope you would like to have given many people inspiration and uh, give them even more enthusiasm for doing code and doing Python? Yeah, uh, I, I, got a question. Uh, I got a question. Uh, I would answer yes and no simultaneously. Mm. So why yes? So yes is because I do try to inspire no matter what I do. It's not yeah. even about coding. If I try to talk in Korean, that serves the purpose of inspiring other people to learn Korean, let's say, so it doesn't matter. So the inspiration part, if when you're doing something and you're not afraid to show your poor skill in doing this currently on YouTube in public, when you expose yeah. the public, so that's something yeah. to motivate other people. So someone, a guy might say, okay, so he's not that well in this, but he's not afraid to show this, hence yeah. I can do this as well, and this motivates him. And if we're talking about code, uh, if the code on its own motivates, I don't think so because uh, there is a very big difference with the uh, between the code that is done for YouTube for the code for YouTube tutorials is a certain style. And many people were saying like, I have my own coding style. And I was trying to explain them. It's not a coding style. It's just a code uh, that was optimized for YouTube. Optimized for YouTube. This is a very important yeah. term because in YouTube, you need to make the code as simple as possible. You don't need to care yeah. about uh, some production, possible production issues because it's not uh, intended for, produ for production. On YouTube, the code should be as didactic as possible. And yeah. being didactic is the exact emphasis I'm trying to do all the time. And let's say uh, it's not that clearly seen in my web scraping tutorials unless every single line of code is commented. So that's, uh, I, and, I didn't, uh, and I didn't even invent that. I saw that in Trevor's media uh, videos. So when he was writing a web app, it, every single route he handles, when the HTTP request is coming, he was just giving a commentary uh, above. So that's his style, that's not my style even. So commanding literally every single line of code. So it's uh, code started being like a story. And then I, tr then I started doing this in my chess programming as well. And in chess programming, this concept I'm currently talking about is uh, visible much better in terms of uh, so you can write chess engine for uh, to be the strongest engine in the world, uh, to be to have a small source code, yeah, just to be tiny ones. Yeah. Uh, but also, what nobody done before me, nobody has done this before me. No one tried to write a chess engine that would be incredibly easy to understand. Because if you're not aware about the concepts of chess programming and you just say, have a look at the source code of Stockfish, even if you're an experienced programmer, you would hardly understand what's going on there. Because yeah. that's a big issue. And when people are reading my code, they uh, especially the code that is written in C, I have made really main commentaries below that, those videos. Like, even though I don't know C, you're, uh, tutorials are great because it's not about how to code in C, it's about how to code chess engines. And I'm really yeah. proud of that. It's the problem solving. It's not, it's, yeah, more, it's, but it's, it's your problem. approach to solving the problem. Absolutely. So the programming language is just a tool. You know, you yeah. don't need to emphasize the problem programming language if you're doing a YouTube video. You need to uh, present the topic you're currently talking about. So that's what I've been doing. This has a limitation though. So currently I've realized that I used to this YouTube format so much that I can no longer do uh, code that would be kind of good for production, let's say. And that's, by the way, that's one of the core reasons, just to answer the very first question, that one, that's yeah. one of the core reasons uh, why I no longer want to write the production code. Because uh, the purposes for production code, the requisites for production code and for YouTube code are totally different. You need yeah. to put an emphasis on absolutely different uh, things uh, in these two, two situations. So as far as I'm really stick to this YouTube format, uh, the best use my code can bring is uh, didactic purposes. So it's not for inspiring, it's for didactic purposes. It's just to show how things work. So that's my goal, I, I would say. Yeah. Okay, and because, um, yeah, as you say, there's a very big difference between, <laughs> I've seen this description, I don't know if it, it translates, but I've seen it on some job applications, some job adverts in the UK, and they say they don't want <clears throat> a lone wolf cold coder uh, yeah, l lone wolf. So lone, lone wolf. wolf. Wait, wait, wait. In Russian, we call this uh, absolutely the same. Lone wolf 
Wolf, yeah. absolutely. We, we have absolutely the same idiom for this. And, and I actually think I'm a lone wolf co coder, and I think you are, maybe? Would you agree? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. The, matter, the matter of being lone wolf is... Uh, it's freedom. Not, freedom. It's freedom. It's not, yeah, mm. exactly. It's all about uh, your... Uh, what do you think about the inappropriate business interaction? That's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, what meant. that's what it means. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I, I had a friend, uh, I still have, have a friend who works uh, in outsourced company in my country. Yeah. Uh, and he earns much more money than I do, but mm. he is forced to follow this kind of development guides and principles they, yeah. they are teaching. So, agile I'm, and all that stuff. I'm so annoyed of that. So, just. Mm. It's not. It's not a matter. The way how you cook uh, derives from the way how you live. Yeah, you can put this yeah. as a quotation back on back again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, we're gonna have so many quotes. People could write a book of all of our quotes. <laughs> well, it's incomparable compared. To, uh, it's incomparable compared to those quotes I'm getting from your emails, especially the <laughs> <Yeah>. is very. <laughs> I would never be that. Okay. No, no. Yeah, so um, I got I wrote down a couple of things while you were chatting because I thought they were important to pick up on. So yeah, uh, the lone wolf, lone wolf coder we've talked about, and um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's that's just personal freedom, isn't it? You you can you can do anything, and you're not restricted by oh no, somebody else writes that bit, somebody else writes that bit, and then you're just trapped in the middle, and you just feel oh this is so boring and. And I know, I think years ago, uh, probably maybe two years ago, when I was going through my one of my textbooks, I, I did the chapter on unit testing. And unit oh, testing, is, that is like so, that's BS, isn't it? It's IBI. Absolutely. Well, uh, uh, well, to us it is, to us. Maybe not to people uh, out there, but. Yeah, uh, I think I clearly got what you're trying to ask about, probably, uh, yeah, so like some, maybe you didn't even say this, but, but I believe that that's the end, that's the good question. So let's start with the unit testing, and yeah. then we drop back to the difference, like lone wolf versus yeah. corporate developer. Let's say so, yeah. uh, uh, unit tests or object-oriented programming or whatever other concept. Uh, it's the matter of the environment where you're working. So do you know why classes and object-oriented pro programming uh, actually appeared in this world? Do you know the reason why? So you could split code up into teams. Yes, yeah. but why? Mm. You're asking this question, why? Why Corp do Corporations, big corporate, business. What exactly in big business? So why exactly? So what's, what's the... Oh, offshoring. Yeah. So you can write, get code written overseas cheaper or... The, the idea is very simple. Uh, mm. You need to split the responsibility for their, inter, for their entire project between yeah. uh, many people. So every, uh, every person is working uh, on his own kind of splitted part. And then yeah. we need to establish the interaction between uh, this kind of splitted part. So in the case, if every splitted part is a class which has the interface like set, get, right? This method yeah. to interact with this sort of class. Every single class in particular serves as a sort of a black box. And the personality of the developer working on this sort of a class can be uh, expressed there at some point. But uh, it's all the matter of uh, building this proper interface. So in that yeah. case, different classes built by different developers can bring up all together and uh, evolve into yeah. a more complicated system. So the it's idea- It's a bit like now what the, the buzzword at the moment is microservices, isn't it? Absolutely. So I just want to say that the, I, the, the core idea behind why why do yep. the object oriented pro programming? It's not because of programming, it's because no. of human resources. Yeah. But very important to understand. So, we need object oriented programming only for teams. We yeah. literally don't really need object oriented programming, pro uh, programming for a single guy. Well, you can argue that, I don't know, like Stockfish using, uh, is using object oriented programming. Many people are, oh my God, how to say this without swearing? Uh, <laughs> some people Sheep. Really so we've almost we've, We almost do it by default. <laughs> we learn object. We learn object-oriented programming, and then we just do it because we know it. Yeah, and that, that's the problem. Doing something uh, because you know it. It's like you 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 see a beautiful girl. It's yeah. good, but it doesn't mean that you need to. Her, <laughs> right? <laughs> it, it's not. You don't need to do this. She she's just she's beautiful. She is, but you don't need to do anything to her, right? No. no. And object-oriented <laughs> programming is think is like okay. Here is a cute girl, so I need to go and 
do my yeah. job. Okay, so yeah. that's the problem. So you use this just because you know this, but you don't even know why. You, why do you actually need this? So you've you said why. You've you've said in the past two minutes. You've said why so many times, and that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that's uh, that's my reference to your brilliant view. You know, uh, it's, it's the it's the question we must keep asking. Yeah, absolutely. I watched this from the very beginning and to the and up to the very end uh, on my own first, and then I did this almost like from scratch again when I've been making the translation. Yeah. For, it's like you said earlier, we, as um, we start off like children and then our minds get violated and I think I don't ask why, or I probably do, but as adults, we don't, none of us ask why like we used to when we were children and yeah, I think that, we need to, we always need to keep trying to go back there. Absolutely, that's because uh, the parents, our consciousness is tied up with them, uh, doesn't assume that question to be ever asked mm. and no one actually is teaching us to uh, make our consciousness flexible. Instead, uh, the globalization, the overall world's globalization leads to the fact of the consciousness being uh, like, I don't know how to call this in English properly. Like Standardized? Uh, standardized, yeah, standardized, mm. exactly. Yeah. Uh, they need to be standardized because that's the only way how to manipulate the mass, uh, the mass of people. Like yeah. mass people When you lost. standardize something, it makes things more predictable. Absolutely, and they try to make this hundred percent predictable because only yeah. in that case they can, uh, like, uh, count their income basically. <laughs> because if it's absolutely, not, if it's not, uh, we'll, we'll 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 talk about pre things being predictable in a minute because we'll get on to machine learning, and okay. Okay. being able to predict things is yeah. There's so many things about being able to predict things. If you can predict something, it it, it helps your profits, and obviously that's what the world is now about, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So there is nothing wrong with predicting, and there is nothing wrong with the data, data uh, with the data-driven decisions as well. Mm. Uh, the problem arises is arising when uh, you're becoming a victim of this sort of a process. As long as yeah. you're not a victim, if you can monetize this, if you're a machine learning expert working on an interesting project, some people will have a natural attitude to. Oh my God, what a brilliant phrase I just said. People, <laughs> Go on. People have a natural attitude. I usually don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, thank you. Uh, uh, did you mean aptitude? Attitude or aptitude? I think attitude. Uh, apt, apt, uh, because there's also well, aptitude with a P. Uh, let, let me, let me, let me Google translate quickly. You, you, you make me feel blush now. <laughs> <laughs> and this should be. Hold on. Oh, my computer is... Uh, I'm just going to pause it for one second, and then I'll, I'll be back. No, no, attitude, attitude. Exactly. Uh, I said exactly what I meant. Attitude. Okay. Okay, so, uh, yeah, we were talking about aptitude. You, you, you looked up aptitude as well as attitude, yeah? Yeah, so it's definitely okay. attitude, not aptitude. It's attitude. Okay. Yeah, because uh, in England, in, over here, we have thing called aptitude tests, which <laughs> no, tests... No. I just checked it out, but so it's a little okay. bit different. So uh, I was talking exactly about the attitude. So for those uh, people, so, uh, are you recording already? Already? Yes, we're recording. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So uh, for those people, who actually, has a natural attitude to uh, this machine learning stuff and data driven decision. It feels like it's really natural. And I, I had, uh, I knew the guys. Uh, I knew one guy, uh, at least one guy, who was really up with data science, and he loved that. He really like uh, was interested in that. And by the way, my client that we're working on uh, real estate property projects as well. He's uh, a very he's a machine learning uh, scientist. His data scientist uh, uh, down to his bones. I don't know how to say this. So, okay. Yeah. So it's very it's very like uh, very. Uh, which which country is he from? He's from Swiss. He's from he's from Switzerland. Yeah. Oh wow! Wow. He's from Switzerland, yeah. Um, we've never been talking in like voiceover mode. By the way, a uh, very interesting thing. So many people think that uh, if you are freelancing, that you need to go for this like voiceover meetings. But I need to say that when I've been working on Upwork, uh, I had these meetings uh, quite pretty often. But when I started started working. Uh, by email with no ways over calls and yeah. with the clients from YouTube, uh, email was literally enough. And I said that I can go for a personal video call 
but I, uh, but I just take some extra fees for that. So I will like turn the our <laughs> hourly pay tracker. <laughs> so if you want to yeah, pay, yeah. like fifty dollars per hour and we're done, no problem. Yeah. And people yeah. like, okay, I just uh, can't explain what I need via email, so no need for going for this. <laughs> but mm. No one, no one wants to pay for this. No. Well, and also we have time zones. Time zones mess up video calls because it's always oh, it's wrong yeah. time of day and so on. Emails, you just plus I can then work it late at night and send them an email when I'm finished, and then three hours later it's their morning and they're already at work logged on, and there's that shrink. That's, yeah, that, that, that works so much better. That's a real mess. Yeah. So yeah, like uh, if the time zones is an issue, then definitely it's uh, like not not the way to go. I remember I've been working with uh, sort of an uh, sort of an American client. It was a Chinese, yeah. but uh, like Chinese guy, but he lived in America, I guess. Like, yeah. And it was very he liked this sort of a things. So we we always had those issues like uh, this voice over calls. You know, like. Uh, it's early morning. He's he woke up. He feels well. He just like drinks coffee, and yeah. in my country, like I'm already done after the tough working day. Like, yeah, I, I want to die. Go. I want to die. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Okay, so what about the project? So how we go? <laughs> so, and I'm like, yeah, oh, man, yeah. kill me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why there's certain certain countries in the world that are better because of the time zones. They're just easier to work with, aren't they? Yeah, uh, I would say that uh, ways over call is good once uh, when it's the matter of uh, the beginning of a long term cooperation. So let's say yeah. we talk for the first time. We need to discuss things. We need to see each other to know each other a little bit better to have have a, have a little bit of a fun, like yeah. joking to each other, just. To, to have this sort of a better understanding, uh, understanding like intuitively. Uh, but when it comes to the pure business interaction, I would say it doesn't help. Probably it annoys even. So yeah. when it comes to the pure technical description, it's always better to have a written form because if something goes wrong or if the client will change his mind, you will then be able to point out to the certain email if sent you, if sent you that. Uh, clearly says that please do this and not that and that yeah. is the mind you can point out that email so a written form for technical tasks is always appropriate i believe is is better okay with this that's that's quite a good kind of chapter heading i think um let's get onto that then so yeah professional i don't know what we would call it we would call it sort of professional conduct and terms of business and all that ibi so how, how do you go about that how do you formally uh, how do you quote for some work? Do you do you give them a rough price? Do you tell them your hourly rate, or do you mix the two? Uh, man, I'm sorry. I just uh, first I thought okay. that I understand. So w what exactly, uh, Troy? Yes. Yeah, so so when when you about when you get somebody contact you and they they want you to do some work for them. Oh, contact, not conduct. Contact. No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, conduct. I, sorry. sorry. I, I I thought you were talking about conduct, like code. Con I, like yeah. Yeah, I did say conduct, as in like. <laughs> professional conduct or okay. how, how do you how do you conduct yourself with the client and how do you we've already discussed it yeah. video yeah. call to start with and some emails yeah. but how do you actually put down on on an email how do you charge them your billing your yeah, uh, your yeah. delivery your delivery time how, when when are you going to finish it um, by and so on well it depends on many things uh, mm. including my mood <laughs> yeah me too yeah. <laughs> so uh the general guideline for this sort of thing so th there is a general principle there are people that are so good and so nice that you feel like you can do the job for them for free yeah and those are the only clients i'm working with so yeah. if i have if i have uh a client who says like okay how much do you want for this job I say I don't want I don't want anything. I'm too busy. Just get away from me. So usually yeah. that's end up with because I already I kind of sense that it's just a waste of time. Not because yeah. he's a bad guy. Not because he won't pay. And not because I'm a bad programmer or something. No, it's not the point. It's just the matter. So uh, uh, having a good soft skills. Uh, the the main thing. Uh, the main uh, description of soft skills in regards to getting in contact in contact with the client is yeah. being being able to predict whether this sort of a business interaction makes sense or not yeah so that's, that's the major soft skill to kick start with 
Do you, do you get alarm? To... Sorry, I'm butting in, but do you get alarm bells? So are there certain words that that make you think, oh no, I don't like uh, JavaScript yeah, yeah. or Selenium? Another, or are there certain another, words that put you off? There's another easy one from Doctor Pi. Thank you, man. Yeah, I'm learning English all the time when I'm talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not sure about the bells, no. <laughs> bells and whistles. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, not sure about the bells. Um, okay, I know how I know how I can. It just happens on the earlier stage. Yeah. So here is the deal: when you go for a traditional advertising, uh, it doesn't have uh, a filter, filter in the clients to the like those you can work like appropriate versus inappropriate. Yeah. But so if you go to Upwork and if you say like I'm a Python developer doing web scraping then yeah. there would be lots of garbage uh, job offers there, for sure. Yeah. Because yeah. They, would be, they would want Selenium, uh, they would yeah. want to scrape LinkedIn, uh, yeah. they would want to, to, to like yeah. hack the world's strongest anti scraping system. And pay you $30. Uh, for $30, yeah. No, yeah. $30, yeah. they want to hack the Pentagon, yeah? So that's kind of yeah. it. Uh, and it's a big issue to explain every time to every single client uh, yeah. that you're not doing this and the reason why behind it and the reason why you're yeah. doing this. So uh, when I felt that this inappropriate business interaction takes too much of my, uh, it's a bit too much of, uh, takes too much of my time, uh, yeah. like my consciousness, my attention as well, uh, I started being, I'm starting being too, many, too much attention to that. Uh, stuff, the best stuff. <laughs> I believe. <that. laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I want to say uh, the word on C or uh, on S, but uh, ended up. <laughs> okay, forget that. <laughs> no, <laughs> okay. So uh, I I nailed this uh, when I switched to YouTube. So when you're doing YouTube videos, uh, yep. those people who don't like what you do, those people who consider your coding style or whatever uh, you do to be inappropriate, they are not going to ask you for anything. And those actually asking, they already know that you don't do Selenium. <laughs> they yeah. already know that uh, literally everything you're talking about in your channel, they already know about that. So it yeah. feels like as if he knows you already, like not a friend maybe, but someone right. kind of who is aware of what kind of developer you are, he's aware of your guidelines, yeah. your principles. So, uh, it's like they've already been filtered, they've already gone through one absolutely. filter. So this filtering happens on the early stage. And in that mm. case, I don't need to distinguish between appropriate and inappropriate client during no. the uh, meeting, let's say. So it's just too expensive to talk to everyone uh, just to figure out if he's appropriate or inappropriate. Okay, so yeah. that's, that's very easy. The only uh, the only thing I need to distinguish that there are some clients. Uh, it's not it's not true for present, but let's say half a year ago, there were clients that I was okay to work with, and there were clients that I uh, clearly realized it would be better for them to work with Dr. Pi. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's that's the case, and all of those clients, you know them personal now. So uh, yeah, uh, sometimes I, I'm still very grateful for one of them as yeah. well. Yeah, uh, thank you, man. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's it's good that someone is grateful. Yeah, so uh, I would say that s uh, sometimes it's okay to redirect uh, to a more uh, to, re to redirect the client uh, to another specialist who has a more precise uh, uh, grasp. Great, no, yeah. precise. Uh, how this called? Uh, uh, grasp, grasp, yeah, more precise. Grasp. I remember yeah, like yeah. This. grasp. <laughs> yeah. A more precise grasp uh, of the topic. Uh, so yeah. if it's about if it's about automation, then I know that Doctor Pi would that would do this better than I do. And not, yeah. not it's not a matter of coding skills or something. No, um, no, no. it's the matter of the consciousness. How the and, consciousness. Um, yeah, absolutely. Just to, just to fill the viewers in on some of the backstory to the the, the, the very good nice client that we're talking about. We won't mention his name because I don't want to embarrass him, but um, it's from South Africa, the one we're talking about, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, a, he's a nice man, very good man. But um, if he's watching, hi. Um, 
Yeah. One, of the things I want, one of the things I want to mention about that is uh, you first um, passed him across to me, partly, which is very ironic now, but it was because um, you would only use Linux, Linux Mint, brilliant, and I was still messing about sometimes using Windows 10. And he wanted uh, an ex. He wanted to comp He wanted a compiled Python code to extract text from a PDF, didn't he? And then create generate a CSV. And he wanted it to compiled for Windows. And um, yeah, uh, to be honest, I could still resurrect my Windows machine if he wants some updates on that. So there's, <laughs> I haven't burned any bridges. But, no um, yeah. this man, no this man in this video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, one thing that, that that it links in nicely actually because he was quite a. Um, Prior to that, I was still like very minimalist, like CMK, and I really liked just coding in a text editor. And um, he he was using VS Code, and kind of just just to kind of so we were both using the same editor and to make it easier, and we were doing screen sharing. I started using VS Code more as well, and um, I'll get your thoughts on VS Code in a minute. But um, I'm not defending Microsoft or anything. But all I'm going to say is VS Code on Linux has got one very very good benefit and it might it, you might not think of it straight away but it is sh uh, session sharing if you share your session you have your ide open on your machine he has it open on his machine and you're actually it's the, the two editors i move the mouse around on my editor and then it moves around on his editor and that was really important because some of the stuff he was doing was very secure and if he just let me do it it would have been a bit risky because of Absolutely. the country that he was in and so on so yeah um yeah, yeah screen uh, session sharing in vs code was just uh, brilliant for that so um, yeah I, I just want to get your thought I know you're, you're probably a bit biased because of what you've seen with the uh, man who did the coding all in the, in the text editor and so on and and I, I, to be honest I still like sublime but there are sometimes I'd actually think oh yeah VS code is, is quite good yeah, so right. I try sometimes I use it sometimes I don't so I'm not, I'm not gonna criticize uh, VS code because no it's much better than I would ever write in my life <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not the case. Yeah. We can, especially, it's valuable uh, for 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 an open source software. So, yeah. when it comes to open source, I just wanted to say if, if you actually tried it on Linux. Yeah, I'm, I'm all I'm already yeah. answering this yeah. question already. Okay, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I did try it. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, here is the deal. Uh, whatever software product we're using, we need to exactly understand what is this. this what is it being designed for? Yeah. So it's all a matter of design, and uh, if your if, if something you're currently trying to do uh, is can be solved much better with the proper solution, like let's say I need to do something. Let's say I need these secure sessions, right? Yeah. In that case, I will need the VS VS Code, yeah. and that's gonna be great. But if I do like uh, tutorials on uh, how to write a web scraper, or even like uh, how to how to create a one line web scraper, right? Yeah. In that case, I would rather uh, open the terminal and yep. write this directly in the Python shell without even involving yep. a text editor. So it's yep. the matter. Uh, it's not the matter of comparing different software products. It's not the. It's not even the matter of text editor plus console versus ID. It's not the case. It's, it's the, the right tool for the job. It's the right. This using the correct tool what? for the job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. What I love about what I love about British people, they can say what I can say in hundred words. They can say this. <laughs> <100 laughs> it would be people, the same right? the other way as well. But um, yeah, I just wanted to cover that because there's so much kind of BS talked about. Oh, oh, you go on YouTube and there's so many videos about people talking about editors and stuff. I don't mind watching a video where they're saying here's four ways to make your editor better, but just where people were going on about oh, PyCharm's great or IntelliJ is great or yeah. it doesn't matter. Just learn the code, do the code, and the editor will look after itself, won't it? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. You know, like uh, the only the only text editor. Uh, the IDE like like spaceship like uh, text mm. editor that I really love is Vim. Yeah, uh, I've been using Vim for some time. I never used this for my kind of freelancing projects, uh, but I, I've been doing some chess programming with Vim uh, back in the day. Yeah, and why I love what I, I don't use it now because uh, it's just too complicated. Mm. Once once I saw a feedback 
uh, regarding them on Android at Google's yeah. Play Market. And the guy said, uh, you've made uh, a very bad app and some swearing there. Uh, <laughs> my phone has broken because I can <laughs> escape from them. He doesn't know that in order to escape from them, you need uh, yeah. to come in line and just... <laughs> <laughs> I should just quickly say, so one thing people always bang on about this, about how to escape Vim, in order, if you do Vim Tutor, it says uh, colon WQ exclamation mark. Yeah. Um, I saw this on Luke Smith's channel, Shift <laughs> ZZ. Why, why does nobody say about Shift ZZ? I don't know. Do you use, do you use Shift ZZ? No, I, I use the oh. stuff with the excl exclamation mark. I don't remember oh. exactly, but I oh. but, Shift Shift ZZ changed my life. Yeah, that's not. I didn't know this. I didn't know this. No, no, it's brilliant. Um, so so but... uh, again, so uh, there is a difference between uh, Vim, say, and VS Code, and not from the feature perspective. The difference no. is conceptual, and the conceptual difference is Vim is trying to. It's like an operating system. It just creates an environment yeah. for a developer who doesn't want to touch the mouse. By the way, that's mm. the initial idea behind the Vim. They just yeah. see that it's faster to type uh, with the keyboard and not touch yeah. the mouse. That's yep. that's very simple. Uh, that's the very simple kind of uh, initial idea behind this entire. Uh, yeah, idea. and I mean, if you do, if you learn typing, I, I don't know about on foreign keyboards, but H J K L, they're the home keys. So if you're a typist, not even a programmer, if you're a typist, those keys you already you already got your fingers on. So and yeah. also that I didn't realize, but there's many programs especially in Linux, where H, J, J is down and K is up, even if you're in like a PDF viewer. Yeah. But so, so, so those navigation keys cr uh, go from Vim to other programs. Yeah, uh, I, I didn't even think, I wasn't thinking about this. This is interesting yeah. insight. Yeah, it's quite pretty interesting. So yeah, and Vim also, uh, Vim is, yeah, if you're, I've been in jobs before where you have to SSH on to another, they call it like a jump server. You jump SSH onto one server, and then on that server, on the desktop, they've got putty, and then you SSH onto something else. And just Vim, you can just, yeah, you just connect SSH, and SSH is brilliant. Yeah, uh, Vim is, is, is incredibly powerful in yeah. cooperation with this command line, uh, command line access, I would say. So yeah. yeah. That's that, that that's makes it that makes it. You know, uh, I think that Vim is very uh, close. is it, really inspired by Unix like operating system. So Vim is something from the Linux world world rather than from the Windows world. So. Absolutely, and I think while well, we both like it, and I don't know, do you think it's a, it's a common kind of theme that people who use Linux or Unix, um, they've at their core they are they like the ethos of minimalism. They like to be minimalist. Because I think we both do deep down. Mm, I think this is not a matter of minimalism uh, in terms of uh, trying to not to grab the entire stuff, but just try to grab the other one. Uh, it's more like a question regarding the core difference between the architecture of uh, Windows and Linux. I'm not going to be diving into the details behind the kernel no. operating system, but just from the high level uh from just a conceptual difference from the high level from the user perspective so windows is very monolithic so you yeah. have like uh one single stuff like a black box and then you tell them to this black box like do this do that and you can't uh change what whatever happening within that black box yeah while linux is uh, a set of very simple bricks like commands like uh apt command App get to install packages like the commands like cat to show the version yeah. of of the file, uh, like well cp like copy cp like yeah. sed orc grep and like, so on grep and yeah. so on mm -hmm. uh, 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 well alas obviously like uh, those commands uh, e e if config interface con uh, configuration yeah. to see the networks and the idea is that using this sort of a commands as a sort of a bricks. We can build the shell scripts uh, that are responsible for the entire kind of like uh, tool chains or processes uh, in the operating system level. So yep. for automation as well, by the way. So mm. uh, the idea uh, of using of using these commands in a custom way is because on Linux you can automate the workflow, whatever you're doing, in the way. Uh, mostly appropriate, uh, mostly 
you know, like the, the the best ever one for the purposes uh, you're trying to uh, for, for the goals you're trying to achieve. So uh, on Windows, uh, you don't have freedom. You're a slave there. You can only yeah. do a certain amount of things in exactly the same predefined way Bill Gates uh, told yeah. you to do, right? Yeah. But on Linux, you're not. Uh, uh, there is no right way of doing things on Linux, and that's what I love it. So it's highly customizable operating system. So and also it is minimalist because if you only want to use two commands, you only have to use two commands. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just I just don't want to call this minimalism because uh, minimalism sounds like uh, you're cutting a piece of meat from your own self. It's not so. Yeah, it's yeah. the matter of uh, being enough. It's just yes. enough to solve the certain uh, sort of a problem. As far as we're talking about programming as a pro problem solving, uh, yeah. we need to go for an extra mile. And we don't need to pay the cost of going extra mile because of the kernel architecture like it happens on Windows, right? Yeah, and it's about being efficient. We're being efficient with your time, with your code, with, with yeah. resources, CPU, RAM, and everything, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So we've covered kind of coding. We've covered kind of um, professional kind of uh, dealing with clients. Um, let's talk about. We've briefly covered machine learning. Uh, um, let's talk about kind of the plans for the future. What What are the CMK plans going forward? Uh, only God knows. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know this joke, like uh, the project. It sounds Gone. Like uh, the project with no documentation uh, yeah. and only source code is commanded. That's that's sort of a meme. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so yeah. imagine imagine the situation. There is a big project, but there is no documentation. So yeah. uh, they only say like good luck, right? And then yeah. we're reading the source code. So the only source yeah. code, the documentation, the source code. So you're reading the one line of uh, uh, <laughs> one commentary behind the line. Yeah. So. Uh, only guy and I don't know. Let's say only guy and John knows what this kind of code does. And then yeah. uh, five hundred uh, lines uh, below, like now only God knows. John doesn't. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Say, say. Uh, this, in English, we talk about um, an oil tanker. You know, this enormous ship, and how it it takes really long time to change direction. Mm, the problem. So it, if if we're like oil tankers, um, how do we start turning, changing direction slightly, or what direction are we starting to take so that we get to where we want to be in a few years' time? Personally, I'll give you an example. My personal example is that I I, I don't think I'm at, I've, I'm good enough at maths to ever be good at machine learning, but I just want to be able to join the pieces up so that I'm. I'm good at web scraping enough to be able to provide quality data for machine learning projects. And I want to bridge that gap because there's people who are brilliant at machine learning, people who are brilliant at web scraping, but um, there's this kind of, I think there's a bit of a niche in between because they say garbage in, garbage out. Uh, yeah, let me start with the oil, oil tankers first. Yeah. So uh, the nature of the oil tanker is to transport the oil from one place to another, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, if you don't steer it quickly enough, it goes into an iceberg. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it, it might go to an iceberg. Yeah. That, yeah. that would be Titanic, not the uh, oil tanker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, James Cameron, hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, I think that. YouTube is not about programming, not about web scraping, not about oil tankers, right? <laughs> uh, YouTube is about what they call uh, stay engaged with your community, right? Yeah. So uh, the more people uh, we have behind the channel, uh, the more general it becomes. So probably, is that good or bad, though? Yeah, yeah. So despite the fact that in uh, tech jobs, the more specific you get, the mm. more money you get eventually. On YouTube, yeah. I think this is on the country. You just have a look at the most popular videos, like mm. uh, half naked girl is dancing uh, on the riverbank, right? So yeah. that's the most popular video. It's very general. Everyone, everyone understands that. Yeah. And let's say even like big, bigger coding. Uh, channels, they're getting general, like they start with a specific programming topics and then they talk about why Linux is better than Windows or things like that. Yeah. So it's it's okay. I just I just need to emphasize that 
the matter of switching to different topics, uh, even like in my case, from web scraping to Korea and teaching English, it doesn't matter. Or in yeah. your case, from uh, web scraping to machine learning, it's not the matter of being focused at the topics. It's the matter of uh, uh, staying in but, with the community. Yeah. So as far as you have the feedback, uh, this community, it's kind of, it's like a single person and like a live or uh, like a live creature. It's it's alive. So yeah, it is moving. Yeah, it's living. You kind of feel uh, like all the subscriber base. It's like a single living creature. Uh, the the more fat it comes, <laughs> that yeah. it, it can move that face. It's like a, a Godzilla, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like a Godzilla. Uh, but uh, anyway. Mm, you know, like, I think that uh, the problem of today's YouTube is uh, YouTube started as the personal blogging service, right? Yeah. But what is YouTube nowadays? It's the media content platform, just like TV. Yeah. So what people do, people do this media content and they completely forgot about uh, blog blogging style sort of a thing. So I yeah. think that... Uh, the only thing that we need to maintain all of the time is this blogging sort of a style of the videos. Why? Because only in that case we can hear back from the community and yeah. we can go for a compromise. So it's yeah. okay that community wants uh, something specific from you. Yeah. And those not getting that, we just unsubscribe and that's okay. But uh, when I make a poll, on different on gathering different opinions like do you like my korean co learning content you don't like you don't care yeah. or you watch only those videos you're interested in the most results were for uh i only watch those videos i'm interested in okay yeah so uh no matter uh no matter if you do a web scraping tutorial or go naked in front of the camera uh there always would be a viewer watching that and yeah. it's okay because they, uh, I think we should focus on uh, on blogging rather than yeah. the media. And as far as yeah. we focus on blogging, uh, in that case, it's a matter it's a matter of a human interaction. By the way, uh, I strongly believe that inappropriate business interaction arises from being focused at tech stuff too much and completely forgetting about this human kind of part, about human relationship. Yeah. Yeah. So if we kind of like uh, don't forget that we are humans, uh, if we don't, uh, yeah, it's just if we just don't forget that we are humans in that case. Yeah, I don't think you you want one hundred percent tech, zero percent human, and you don't want it the other way either, do you? You don't want one hundred percent human, zero percent tech. I think that was what I was getting at on my video the other day when I was saying about these people with the Apple laptop and they live in an apartment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they say they're coders, but all they do is they sit on their sofa and you just see a soft focus shot of them yeah. typing, and that's and it. it. IKEA and, furniture as well, yeah. IKEA. Yeah, and to be honest, there's a hundred or a thousand people out there doing that, so I, I don't see any point in really watching that because, okay, sometimes you see them go to the beach or sometimes you see them uh, do you know, go on holiday, but the rest of the time it's always the same. Do, uh, do you know how did the K-drama industry solve this issue you're currently asking about? Like how to switch from uh, <laughs> web scrape into machine learning. Korean uh, K-drama industry has solved this. So uh, that, that's the way how the way uh, I'm watching lots of K-dramas, by the way. Yeah. So uh, they need to make money. And that's the reason why they uh, use product placement all along the way. But they didn't. Right. They learned this. Uh, they've learned doing this so naturally. So yeah. it works the following way. So uh, the characters are driving the uh, Audi cars. I don't know, yeah. uh, like whatever else. Uh, they're uh, drinking like specific coffee from uh, from the cafes available in uh, Seoul, right? Uh, yeah. They go into the supermarkets, supermarkets uh, like on the cars in Korea as well. Yeah, and it feels very naturally. It doesn't even feel like a product placement. It feels like uh, a real world story because yeah. the characters are not in like some separate world, but instead they're living 
in exactly the same world we do. So it's kind of like yeah. if you go outside, you will now meet that character, especially if yeah. you're in Korea, right? <laughs> so yeah, yeah. That's what's happening. That is, that's a big problem for them, by the way. Yeah. So I think here is the same. Uh, it's okay that uh, this uh, by, by, uh, by product placement, we're not, we, we don't have to go for product placement, obviously. Uh, I mean, like trends and topics is another sort of a product placement. So trending topics like machine learning is is just okay. But uh, the main uh, deal, why Korean why K dramas are so interesting? I can't say I can watch uh, love story TV series is from whatever other country but Korea. They make me sick because they are so <laughs> unnatural. But yeah. when I see uh, when I when I but when I watch Korean uh, love story dramas. They made me. They almost make me cry. If I could cry, I would swear I would cry. <laughs> every time you watch this, you know how this is gonna how this is gonna end up eventually. They all yeah. follow exactly the same pattern, exactly the same scenario, right? But yeah. every time you watch this, you really want okay. So just tell this girl that you love her. You, you really have to, <laughs> and she will, and she will and you will be happy. Oh, please, can, <laughs> really, you're living for this, and yeah, then yeah. they are very very sincere. So that's the, that's the deal. So on the one hand, they have this product placement all the way long, but they are so sincere. So I believe mm. if, uh, when we're making a content, if we are sincere, the more sincere we are, the more it compensates uh, this trend and sort of a stuff. And then we have this compromise between uh, like trending topics and keep being a human at the same time. So I think just being sincere is uh, nowadays most uh, requested thing because people have so many information coming into their minds and yeah. hearts. Very tired. Or oh, as um, really, yeah. as, uh, as 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 gangster rappers have been saying for 20, 30 years, keeping it real. Keep it real. Keep it real. Yeah, yeah. Keep and that's absolutely. that's it's a cliche, but it's so true, isn't it? Absolutely. Got to keep it real. Absolutely. And by the way, the, the popularity of this gangster rap arising from that it wasn't like from high society, like no. pop stars. I almost said porn stars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's not. It was true. from Brooklyn and from Compton and the streets, wasn't it? Yeah. But uh, with the gangster rappers, it's like from from the lower uh, social yeah. ranks. Yeah, yeah. And that's the way why they're so popular. Yeah, they didn't have gold jewelry at the start, did they? Uh, they didn't hear him again. They didn't have all the jewelry and the, the big cars when they started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no. Uh, that came after. I know that DMX, DMX uh, was uh, selling uh, was selling hijacked cars. <laughs> yesterday, I learned this new word. Hijacked. You hijacked. learned hijacked. Hijack cars. I learned this word yesterday from you, man. Brilliant. <laughs> so DMX was so, in hijack cars. Yeah. <laughs> so um, let's let's talk. Let's um, we're, we're probably n nearer to the end of the video now than the start. Let's talk about language and kind of let's. We, we you've talked so, quite a bit about Korean. Um, let's just talk about a, a bit. Just round up with a bit of chat about English and a bit of chat about Russian and how how you want to help people learn english and yeah your thoughts on english and russian and just chat about english and russian in general uh yeah thanks for the question that's mm. something i'm definitely more interested to be talking about rather than this <laughs> interaction yeah. interaction yeah. yeah 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 i i don't know one cares about this but <laughs> no. we have fun that's enough yeah 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 so yeah. i mean to, to tell us about how i mean how many million people speak russian uh you know, I, I used to say that uh, even though i speak russian it doesn't make that much sense <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah and why is it good i mean i think it but i don't understand the cyrillic alphabet but i think that's a really good mental puzzle just to even be, try and under, teach myself that or learn that uh, I think apart from any business or financial reward, just learning a language in general is, is just good. It, it stretches your brain, surely. Uh, okay, so if you want to talk about this from, from this perspective, yeah. uh, let, let's, let's go from this from perspective. So, uh, you know, like uh, the idea behind the language, behind the spoken language, is being able to interact with other human beings, right? 
Yeah. So if you don't need to interact with other human beings, uh, learning languages on their own might not be making that much of a sense. It's like uh, uh, you, <laughs> I know four <laughs> words how to say this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> one with J, one with W, one yeah. with T, and one yeah, I have to do a letter. <laughs> okay, so it's like you're doing this to your own self. It doesn't yeah. make that much sense. Better, better to, to do this with. Uh, uh, with other person, uh, and it would be better if uh, the other person's sex would be opposite to yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you're saying. But even if you just did it, if you were just in prison and you just learned another language, surely that uh, it's like doing a crossword or a Sudoku or even playing chess. It's just a, a mental puzzle. And I think learning a, a, a whole new alphabet, like the Cyrillic alphabet, even that. Whether you're going to speak it to other people or not, just even uh, that is just really interesting. I, I really get your point. I, I understand. Mm. I understand why you call this a mental puzzle. So let, let's go for an example. For me, Korean was yeah. a mental puzzle. Okay, so yeah. Korean is very different from whatever Eastern. Like you know, like if we can compare, compare uh, Korean and Russian, or if we compare Korean and English, then I can yeah. say that Russian and English is the same language. Absolutely, right. yeah. there is no difference between them right. at all. Because it was Korean, a symbol or a character is a word, uh, isn't it? It's not a letter, it's a word. Is that right? It's uh, it's alphabet. In Korean, it's alphabet. It's called okay. hanbun. It's alphabet. Yeah. It's, they have the consonants and the vowels. Okay. Vowels. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, for me personally, it's a matter of uh, exploring a different mentality. Right. So for me, uh, the matter of language learning, it wasn't, it was never uh, an exercise for my brain. Uh, here is the deal. So when I, when I, when I wasn't a programmer and I had a job that I had it, hated with all my heart, the biggest issue wasn't the job itself. I didn't hate the job because the job, the job was bad. I hated the job because I needed to uh, get in paid uh, by the people surrounding me with this sort of a mentality I couldn't accept. That was a problem, right? So I was thinking that maybe if uh, I will start working with the people having a different mentality, it would help me to reveal my hidden talents, I don't know. And in that case, that would be a way more natural process of working, actually. And mm -hmm. it worked. So when I started work, uh, when I started uh, getting paid from uh, Western clients, like English-speaking clients, let's say, uh, those yeah. uh, sharing this, uh, let's say Western, like American, like mentality, like in just very general, let's say American. Yeah. It's not the matter of like British or American yeah, or, yeah. or European. But let's say like the Western uh, sort of a, sort of a mentality. Uh, suddenly, uh, the puzzle uh, worked. So, it kind of everything goes all together, and it and it suddenly works. So, uh, and I realized that English is uh, the matter of knowing English, the matter of talking in English, is not the matter of uh, just using different words or different pronunciation or different patterns. It's just the matter. It, so English is a sort of an interface uh, of the Western mentality. It's just an yeah. interface. Uh, it's a spoken interface. I would it's say. like an API. Uh, it's like an API, absolutely. It's just yeah. an API. And for me personally, the language on its own is not the goal. The mentality is the goal. Uh, the matter, okay. of, the matter of uh, researching and exploring the mentality. So mm. first, uh, I had an issue that I wanted to make money without being enslaved. Yeah. And the way, uh, the reason why I was enslaved uh, when I wasn't coding, like back in the day, it wasn't yeah. because of the job. The job was fine, but I was enslaved by this uh, judging people. I was enslaved by the thoughts. That like when when someone judges another, it might not say anything. It just may think he thinks like you're not like me. You're doing wrong, and this yeah. sort sort of a judging is really annoying. And I'm very sensitive. I, I, I was. Uh, did Did you feel self conscious? It... Uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I know the feeling. So yeah, that's yeah. We all know that too. <laughs> yeah. No matter of mentality. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, uh, and that was that was an issue. So. For me, English was the matter of uh, interacting with a, uh, with a different mentality, a different culture, I would say. Yeah. And uh, 
when I started doing this, uh, it worked for me. But then I had another problem. So I would say that English in general is a language for business interaction. Not in terms of you obviously need to go for interact uh, for inappropriate business uh, interaction. <laughs> Not in this case. Mm -hmm. I mean, like uh, English is very uh, precise and materialistic, and it's incredibly good for tech. It doesn't mean that uh, you can have a good literature in English, or mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that you can express your feelings uh, that great. Uh, just like any other language, it's absolutely brilliant to say literally whatever you want to say. But uh, let's say like uh, JavaScript is better for uh, writing, uh, like for automating the, uh, like you click a button, you call a JavaScript function. So for, for this sort yeah. of purposes, Python is better for uh, working with data. It just happens yeah. so it's just fact, yeah. right? Uh, and the same with the spoken languages. So English is just better for this business-like interaction, even if it's not about business. So it's very like talk to the point language. So language, uh, so English is a talk to, to the point uh, language. Uh, let's say Russian is talk about nothing language. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very, very like <laughs> uh, the opposite. Oh, you're putting me off. I wanted to, I wanted to learn it. Uh, it didn't, 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 You're didn't. putting me off. I wanted to learn it. I wanted to learn Russian. Well, no, you uh, put me off. <laughs> no, no, no. Do, uh, do ultra. Uh, it's not about that. Uh, you know, like mm, it's about. Uh, it's not about the initial motivation. Uh, the initial motivation. Uh, it's like, let's say you want to learn to. Uh, you want to learn kung fu, Chinese martial arts, right? Yeah. Uh, let's say you you, you just got your ass kicked somewhere in the street and you say like yeah. okay now we'll learn kung fu and i will punish that uh okay mo folks right <laughs> mo folks, yeah. <laughs> mo folks, right? oh so learning english is this is a, a comparison a mental like a, a mental equivalent yeah so right uh, yeah that's what i'm talking about so mm. let's say in this case you're like okay i will go to china and find a chinese master and you go yeah. there and let's say it's incredibly hard but let's say you've managed to do this yeah. and the master is telling you now you would be uh uh staying like this mm -hmm. can you see me uh yeah. doesn't matter it's just a static posture for 10 years yeah. and you're like will you teach me to fight one day and he says like mm -hmm. your mind is not calm you need to calm down for yeah. 10 years and then you yeah. say like okay hold on a sec so i wanted to learn to fight and you're telling me to, st to sit still or to stay yeah. still so what the heck is going on and in this case you have uh two different uh two different approaches so you can drop this and go to the boxing gym right yeah just go it just works faster oh you can uh realize that fighting people uh comes from your own internal tension and the only reason yeah. why you get why you got your ass kicked is because you just live their own life okay yeah yeah so these are two different two, two completely different approaches Exact, exactly the same works with the languages so if you if your initial desire to learn language is similar to you want to uh learn, learn how to fight then yeah. you lose your motivation as long as you face a real difficulties right yeah uh, but if you want, uh, if you don't want to learn how to fight, but you're ready and you're open-minded enough to acquire uh, whatever you might encounter during this process of learning this language, which is literally the matter of acquiring the mentality. It's not even the matter of yeah. acquiring the language, but the, but the mentality. The most thing that we're talking with my Korean teacher is about the uh, Korean mentality. Uh, in order to say you in Korean, uh, just yeah. like, like I say you, it's yep. uh, you need to apologize hundreds of times you need to make sure that you they that she won't get you wrong okay mm. and you, you need to ask a permission in a very polite way okay yep. because otherwise it would almost like uh, like a swearing okay so okay that's the matter, that's the matter of mentality and yeah. when and on the other hand uh when she accepts this it's like i don't know you're the happiest man in the world because uh this is something Normal, normally it doesn't happen and it's a big compliment it's an amazing compliment just to give you an idea how big it is uh married couples in korea are not always saying you to each other wow. can you believe wow. it why because yeah. they're not close enough no wow. just... oh whoa <laughs>
<laughs> so, so what can uh, our viewers learn from this? Should, should we be? Would, would you like to think that we've made them curious about other languages and how it affects the way you think? Would you like that to happen? That other people who've watched this think, "Hey, I, I should uh, yeah, go and check I, some I, other I, languages." Uh, well, this is very personal, uh, mm. but I, but I would say that if you can speak only one language, you don't know your own self at all. If right. you start talking two languages, in two languages, uh, you kind of like extending yourself, but you still yeah. like you is you. So, uh, I mean, like even if you perfectly speak in Russian, just right the next moment, you will remain mm. Dr. Pai, exactly the yeah. same as you've been before. But if you know Russian and the third language, let's say Spanish, yeah. like you do, yeah. In that case, uh, and again, like uh, the Western languages, like Russian, Spanish, you can learn Russian, Sp Spanish, and like. 10 more languages it doesn't change anything i mean there should be one language at least one second language from the west and at yeah. least one second language from the east. so either korean mm -hmm. or chinese or japanese doesn't, doesn't matter and in that case when you compare them so uh when i speak one of these different languages i feel like a completely different person yeah and when you go in like to russian russian speaking mode korean speaking mode, mode uh, or english speaking mode like yeah. three different code Makikins. I wouldn't even say the code Makikin is only the guy who speaks in English. When I speak in no. Russian, I'm not, I'm not code, code Makikin anymore. No. Oh, that's kind of it. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. So it's uh, more like if you want to discover your own nature, that's. Yeah. That's it's like people who learn music. If you learn to play a musical instrument, it's like. Uh, <laughs> it's like, do you know the old games where it was like Tomb Raider and you run around to all these caves and you find all these new rooms and you bash a door down and then you go in and there's all these gold and all the all these monsters. It's like a role play game, you know the role play games. Uh, well, I played Doom a lot in the past. But yeah, yeah. So it's I'll... like that, isn't it? And the more the more tunnels you go down and the more times you branch off, you're going into different areas of your brain and it's like learning music. Every new yeah, language you yeah, learn, it's yeah, unlocking yeah, it's a new not door not in your brain. That. Yeah, something like that. But here is another trap. Uh, you might get lost there. Yeah. So if you're yeah. doing this, you need to remember the goal. The why do you play Doom, right? Yeah. So why? Uh, why? There, why? 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 Yeah. So there are two yeah. main. There are two main differences. Uh, the, the, sorry. There. There are two main reasons to play Doom. So mm. the first reason is violence. You can't kill people outside, <laughs> so you kill yeah. monsters. Yeah, you're crazy if you want this. Uh, yeah. The true, reason, the true uh, idea why to play Doom is to escape this hell. Uh, you remember it's called Doom, Hell on Earth. You yeah. remember the name. Mm. So the idea of in this entire game is to escape the hell on Earth. Yeah. If you think about this. And uh, I didn't think that it's possible to uh, complete the entire Doom, 32 levels mm. or something, uh, with no cheat codes. But it is right. possible. And I saw guys doing speed runs uh, yeah. For 80 minutes, entire yeah. room, and wow. I was so amazed by this. This is exactly what I'm trying to do in this life. So instead of yeah, uh, like trying to kill the monsters around, instead of trying yeah. to, fight, you just better try to escape from here as soon as possible. That's what freedom means to me. Yeah, and um, it's, learning another language is kind of uh, gives you freedom from your own language. Yeah, not only yeah. from your own language, but from your. From the yourself. from the from yourself, you're, from what you think, from you consider, from what you yeah. consider to be yourself, from what you, you blink, uh, it, um, from what your parents, it, from what, yeah. what your parents made you think that this is you. Yeah. you. Tunnel it, vision where you only see straight ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like um, we, with horses, they call it blinkers, don't they? Where they put the things on the side of the horses so that the horses can't see anything there and they can't see anything yeah. there. Yeah, 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 like, like this, like this. Yeah. yeah, and that's the whole world we live in. If you only, if you only go on Facebook or if you only watch to go on Twitter and, and uh, you know, you, you learn a language where some other people would just watch football and they just go on Twitter and they will only ever learn that. So, yeah, and YouTube is great because YouTube... There's so many things that I've learned and seen from YouTube, and I, it, it's up to you. So it's personal choice whether you watch cats videos or naked lady dancing. <laughs> yeah, it's always. But a if, 
<laughs> yeah, but if you if you just for once just try type in something different, or if you follow someone who's inspirational, who's or someone who's slightly different to you because they're older, or because they do a different job, or because they're from a different country, and then that leads to something else, and then that leads to something else. Because if I'd never learned wanted to learn Python, I wouldn't have followed CodeMonkey, and then if I hadn't followed CodeMonkey, I wouldn't know all these things you talk you talk about, and I wouldn't know about Korean language, I wouldn't know about the Russian and um, and not just the languages, it's like the thought processes, so I wouldn't know how someone else thinks. So by watching these blogs, you can understand how other people think as well, and that's really powerful, absolutely, isn't it? Absolutely, and that's, that's the reason uh, behind the sarcasm of my recent video. <laughs> <laughs> I said, like, uh, uh, Python programming, web scraping, uh, Korean, English, and now yeah. Chinese Qigun, and uh, different <laughs> expressions of a single flow, and I'm, I'm doing some forums in the forest. And the, this, the sarcasm is that it's kind of like, uh, doesn't matter how, uh, how the flow is being expressed. Uh, it's all the matter how it flows within. Because yeah. whatever external physical activity we go for, uh, it always resonates kind of inside. So well, no matter what we do outside, uh, it does put some influence on our internal vibration, I don't know, our internal being on how we feel ourselves internally. And yeah, yeah that's, that's kind of, so I believe everything, everything we learn, just again, go back to the oil tanker analogy, everything we, we, we learn just changes our direction slightly, doesn't it? Everything we watch, everything we read, if well, we want it to, it helps yeah, us change, yeah, so change direction it, for a good direction. It definitely uh, it makes us start in, start thinking about this. Uh, yeah. Whether to change the direction or not is uh, your personal choice. But I would yeah. say like the old Chinese wisdom, right? So the old Chinese wisdom says that the outer activities, so whatever you do in the outer world, yeah. is intended to research your internal world. And unfortunately, yeah. in today's world, it's totally the opposite. They say like you need to take the most of your talent and serve the uh, purposes of the outer world. So this is what the slave yeah. is. What does it serve? So if you take your uh, life and put yeah. it to whatever company, let's say, yeah? yeah. The company grows, but you're dying. Did that, yeah. did that have sense? I don't think so. It's but, like you're going through a funnel. You're, you're big and then you have to go through a funnel and it makes you small. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. But on the other hand, if you have like, uh, if we have like, uh, I'm doing some, I'm trying some stuff, right? There is a nice yep. GitHub, uh, GitHub username, trying some stuff. It's great yeah. and also chess engine. <laughs> trying yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and so if you're trying some stuff, in that case, uh, well, our internal being is very complicated. And yeah. let's say we can work out one part by dancing, another part by singing, another part by coding, right? Another yeah. part by making videos, whatever. So whatever, yeah. dif like different acti uh, different uh, external activities uh, yeah. allows us to work out a certain space in our internal being. And yeah. the more uh, consciousness we put into our internal being, uh, the more clear our mind is, for otherwise we're just getting brainwashed. Yeah. That's kind of it. Yeah. yeah. And that is, there's always the balance between exploring many different things that we want to explore, and we have to balance that against the need sometimes to have specialist knowledge, in which is... In machine, learning, in machine learning, this is called exploration versus exploitation algorithm. Brilliant. That's, uh, yeah. that's amazing. There is a search algorithm, uh, algorithm yeah. called uh, Monte Carlo Tree Search. It's yeah. very interesting. Uh, I, well, I, I can't ex describe this technically in that great details, but just to give a, a very brief conceptual uh, yeah. uh, description, because this is very important. This is exactly what we've been talking about. So the idea yeah. is that we're not. So uh, we have uh, we have a search tree, and yeah. we have one node, two nodes, and then more, 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 and then yeah. the points. So the idea is that uh, the life is not enough to explore all of the work, uh, all of the nodes. So no. we need ch to choose some sort of a nodes, right? Yeah. And here, we all, uh, here, uh, this Monte Carlo, Carlo, Monte Carlo research algorithm is the matter of a trade-off 
between uh, walking through the certain path, like from this node, then here, here. So the known path, yeah. uh, when you walk through the known path, it gives you stability, and yeah. the evaluation would be stable. This is the pure research term, so you will yeah. have stable evaluation. However, yeah. you might be uh, missing some bigger opportunity. Yeah. So in that case, in order to not to miss the bigger opportunity, you need to go for a bit of an exploration. But at yeah. the same time, you also need to keep exploiting that some sort of certain path you have you've already discovered. Because yeah. you pay yeah. your bills, uh, you need to I don't know give money to your wife, things like this. Yeah. So uh, that that's so we need to make uh, this. It's always a trade off. So they call yeah. it exploration versus exploitation. So that's that's kind of there's so many analogies between code and life. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. absolutely. I don't know which mimics which really. Bit of both maybe. But um yeah, I think well I, I think probably we've got so much more material to cover as well in the future. I want to, uh, next time I want to talk more about your chess engines and how that go into that world a bit as well. But um just to kind of um you know, I don't know if in in Russia or wherever or whatever TV you watch, they have like at the end of the news, they always say like a a funny bit or a happy bit or a really like light-hearted bit or whatever no uh, uh at the end of the so, tv news yeah what? so at the end of the news I, I try not to watch the news because it, i just find it so depressing but when i used to watch the news on tv they'd say oh no there's been a war and there's been an explosion oh, oh. Yeah, and then they'd say oh yeah. but despite all that serious stuff um there's a picture of a kitten <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. To, yeah. so not quite the same because we haven't been talking about explosions and war. We've been talking about really kind of cool, positive stuff, haven't we? But um, just kind of as a light-hearted thing, as kind of unexpected, because you will not be expecting what I'm about to put in front of the webcam. But uh, yeah, you know, like, uh, I actually don't watch TV at all for I don't know no. twenty years apparently. <laughs> Are you looking? Can you see my screen though? Uh, no, I, I can. Uh, oh, oh man! Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I just I just can't see your screen because you're you know. Do we still I remember? Do we, do we still recording? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm uh, sorry, guys. Yeah, we just have. Uh, oh, okay. Have, uh, I will sh I will show you this next time when you are looking at the screen. But okay. uh, what I've got here in my hand is um, a cassette tape with uh, ZX Spectrum chess. Oh, one K chess. Yeah, that, that's 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 brilliant. Yeah, yeah. it's um, written by Scion and software by Scion, forty eight K RAM and yeah. uh, nineteen eighty two. Yeah, there, there was there was an article in some magazine uh, providing the source code in assembly for <laughs> for that. Uh, ZX. How many, do, you, do you know how many lines that was? Uh, uh, what? How many lines? How many lines of code was that? Lines of code. Well, it's, uh, well, I can't say like uh, how many lines of code. I, I, I saw that visually. It's kind of like uh, like big magazine pages, like a couple of them. Yeah. Okay. It, Probably it was, maybe thousands. It was very. It was very tight. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> you're limited uh, with the memory, and that affects the design. Yeah, but I think yeah. that uh, we shouldn't be talking about chess engine in this video because it's going to be too overwhelming. Yeah, absolutely. So I, th I think this is quite a good point to just kind of uh, wrap up what we've discussed. Yeah, and, I think, um, yeah, I, I think uh, hopefully everybody's got, yeah. there'll be something of interest for everybody in this, really, whether you're interested yeah. in web scraping, whether you're interested in languages, and uh, or whether you're interested in human beings, because that's what we are, and that's absolutely. kind of the other aspect I think, I think, of I think we just need to. I think we just need to add some timestamps to the video, so... Sure. Yeah, they'll be down here for everybody and if you want to skip the bit about VS Code or if you want to skip the bit about uh, core patterns then well that's up to you I would recommend watching all of it though wouldn't you uh, you know like uh, <laughs> in, in order to answer this question uh, I'll tell you a little story so in other yeah. hours of interview <laughs> yeah, yeah. so uh, when I've been watching your why video yesterday yeah. Uh, I was kind of like, okay, Dr. Pi, you need to add the timestamps. And I, I opened no. the commentaries and I wrote that. I put yeah. that uh, on the commentary, like, uh, you should add the timestamps. And yeah. that's, uh, the time when I watched the entire video, I've erased that line completely. Yes. You know yeah. why? Because I why? understood that uh, even though you said, like, you can skip the video, you can, like, yeah. fast forward to the most essential part. Yeah. This entire video is the most essential part. You can skip it. If you don't yeah. watch the entire video, it doesn't make any sense. But for this video, I think that uh, it's pretty modular. Like, yeah, yeah I think so. 
like anything I do. <laughs> so. I think, yeah, I think this can we can break this up into chapters. Whereas, yeah. exactly with that Y video, I deliberately didn't put timestamps because it's like reading a book and missing out the the, how, the middle, the bit in the middle would make yeah. more sense with it. So I think I think we've covered uh, plenty amount of uh, standalone topics here. Yeah. So if this would be a small playlist like uh, <laughs> part one, part two, etc. So this oh. might be quite yeah, amazing. yeah. If the viewers want little small sections of each topic, we can do that. So uh, yeah, no, um, uh, stay on the line after and we'll just round up. But um, just for this video, I'd like to just, well, uh, we just want to say thank you to everybody who's watched, don't we? Uh, absolutely. So guys, uh, like, uh, hello to, yeah. hello and goodbye to Dr. <laughs> community. So Yeah, and CMK, Code Mickey King. Thank you to all the CMK viewers. <laughs>